All right, we're live and direct from the B-Side studio once again for an ep- another episode of the Rabbit Season podcast. I believe we're at like 19 or something like that. Uh, we just got back to it after a small hiatus. We're back, be more consistent. We had to adjust a few things, and then, you know, real life kicks in sometimes. We had to take a little break, but we're back. And we're here with the homie, straight back from his second home, Vegas, man. We got Hazard in the building. That's right, man. Welcome back, yeah. brother. That's What's right. going on? How we doing, fellas? All right, man. And, uh, you know, it's cool. You know, it's it, it makes sense that you come here straight back from your your second spot. <laughs> uh, we've seen uh, you didn't have one of your most memorable Vegas trips because or else you might not have been here today. For real, for real. But, uh, <laughs> for real. <laughs> I was or needed assistance to get. Yeah, I, I, dog, <laughs> dog, that's still one of the I mean, I know you were hurting, bro, and I don't mean it in that way, but that's still one of the f- funniest fucking thing because you chose to put it on your your yeah. shit anyways. Yeah, you posted I did. it. I posted yeah, it. Yeah, this fool rolled that he rolled to Vegas happy as shit. And he was rolling out on a wheelchair. Dog. Yes, sir. That's a that's such a legendary picture. Yeah. Um, I remember so the way bro, it the happened. the picture's perfect, dog. It's like you just slouched. Yes, bro. So, so I I fell in love with Vegas in, in a in a weird way. Like so, basically, when I was in prison, we would talk about what we're gonna do when we get out. Uh, and one of the biggest things was. Like, this one fool told me, fool, you got to go to Vegas and fuck some skonkas, dog. <laughs> you got to go, yay, yeah, oh. there's fucking bitches in yeah. Vegas, fool. Yeah. Go to Vegas, perro. So I was like, You sound like, like one of my you know? uncles, bro. So, 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 you know, so I was like, I was like, all right, all right. So when I came home, it was like, it was one of the things I really wanted to do, but I was on parole. So, yeah. I had, you know, so I actually went out there probably about two, three months home. I went out there, but I was like real uncomfortable. I didn't want to go nowhere. I, I remember that because you, know? you were talking about that. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I was like real uncomfortable. Uh-huh. And then I started going. Oddly and funny enough, I like really started going once I got with my lady. So it wasn't like really no go to Vegas. Yeah. To fuck some <laughs> Not for that reason. <laughs> but but I go to Vegas, you know, and and, uh, and we kind of just like it was. It was, I, I just like the energy of the city. You know what I'm saying? And and, and I gotta say, because a lot of people, like Vegas locals. Be like, we don't even touch the strip, and I respect that. I totally oh, understand yeah, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've, but we've, that that four-mile strip of street is, like, some of the dopest energy ever. And oh, for me, man. I write music when I'm there. I, um, you know, I actually, like, really get in, into my creative bag. The night in question that you're talking about, <laughs> um, when I got wheelchaired out to Venetian, um, I was um, I was the there for shout out to the Venetian, man. but I was there Thanks for, for the boy. nice wheelchair. <laughs> so I, comfortable, comfortable. Yeah. So I was there with I was there for my boy got beats. Uh, he uh-huh. he he's produced a lot of records for me. Started riot amongst others, and it was his birthday. His birthday's three days after my after my ladies. So I'm like, um, we're in Vegas. Like let's do it up. <laughs> so so we're so we're in Vegas, and. Uh, they had just legalized herb Uh in Vegas for like recreational use. You could walk in and buy weed. So we were staying at the Sahara. I'll never forget this. And across the street from the Sahara is this little uh, dispensary. I think it's called relief, but it's R E and then leaf. Right. Ah, So clever. Yeah. Very, very, very. (laughs) So I walked in there and my, my boy at the time was like big on edibles because he wouldn't really smoke. So I bought him a, a big old chocolate bar. It looked like a Hershey's chocolate bar. And it said 100 milligrams, which is, like, relatively light. It, it so, probably, they probably in printing forgot an, another zero. Right? <laughs> so we, so we, so I go, I tell them happy birthday, whatever. And that night, we're going to all go out. It's the, the big night. It's, like, in celebration of, of my lady's birthday, in celebration of, of my boy God Beast's birthday, we're going out. So we started pre-gaming in the room. And we're drinking, and we're drinking. And then he's like, you know what would be really dope, bro? Be the ultimate birthday gift for me. I'm like, what's good? He goes, I know you got me this chocolate bar for my birthday, but if you ate some of it with me, <laughs> yeah. that'd be a real cool present. <laughs> so I was just like, all right, I guess that's what we're doing there. You know, happy birthday. Who am I to deny a birthday wish? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I had one square, and every square said 10 milligrams. I remember that. It was light. Yeah. So, and so I eat one square, and then I didn't feel nothing. Probably 15, 20 minutes go by. We're still doing drinking games in the room. 
Man, run me another one. Uh, that's a, that's, that's, how, that's how it always happens, you know. It's how, like every meme. every edible story is the same, you know. So so this had a blank shit. Three you know, hours yeah. later, before we just started, that I was just telling your lady that why I don't fuck with edibles so yeah. much is because I don't know how to judge how much because you takes. don't feel it right away. Yeah. So yeah. you really don't. So yeah. so fifteen minutes go by, not to have another one, you know. And then I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I said, give me one more before we left the room. <laughs> So I'm three pieces in supposedly 30 milligrams. My ass. My ass. <laughs> we get out to the strip, and all of a sudden, I, I remember I slipped and I fell. And when I hit the ground, I was like, like, kind of like, I kind of crouched up like, oh, this is going to be bad. <laughs> and I Like hit, where you're waiting for the pain to kick in? And then it never came. Uh-huh. And then I was like, oh, I'm high as shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> so then they picked me up. They picked me up, and it just it went south from there. At a certain point, I guess um, I insisted on going to Fat Tuesday to get an alcoholic slushy. I got the alcoholic slushy. I took two sips of it, and then I threw it away. This is all stuff that they told me after. <laughs> Then uh, um, because we, we know you wouldn't throw away an alcoholic beverage. No, I would not do That's that. That's alcohol especially abuse. Slushy. Exactly, That's I wouldn't alcohol do that. Alcohol abuse, especially a slushy. <laughs> yeah. But so when I'm sitting there, um, crouched over a tra- trash can next to the river inside the Venetian little man-made <laughs> river, and I'm just blowing chunks <laughs> all <laughs> in the trash can. It was all bad. You know what I'm saying? Hey, yo, Big Gene is in the building, man. Feel free to do that laugh, my brother. He's trying to hold it in right now. <laughs> so, so I'm just sitting there just, just letting just, just let this trash can have the worst of me. Mm-hmm. And I and from what I was told, my lady got upset because she's like, you're going to do this on my birthday. Yeah, right? No, so yeah. she did. Like she's babysitting you on her yeah, birthday. So yeah, so she said, no, I'm not doing it. Okay. You can, so she told my boy got beats. <laughs> She told my boy Guy Beats, you could babysit. <laughs> and shout out to my guy, man. Love to my boy Guy Beats because this fool Guy Beats actually watched after me the whole time. He didn't even get mad or nothing. My, he my, was probably tripping balls staring at you. Like, my, oh, God Beats got my you. Got soulmate, him. My soulmate over here took off. She was a Johnny Rackets. You know it was saying? her birthday, bro. What do you she expect? was upset. It was, no, it was, it was actually a few days after her birthday. It was my boy's birthday. <laughs> okay. It was his actual birthday. She was post game, but yeah, it's just, it's just you know it's just ridiculous. <laughs> and then the part that I kind of remember, I'm sitting in front of a slot machine, and I started like breathing like, <laughs> oh shit! And I, I remember like, this. I actually remember. I I could clearly remember this. I was like, <laughs> and I was like, mm-hmm. and when I when the, when I did the second, mm-hmm, my hand goes. You better fucking not. I just remember looking at her and she's like, You better not. And I looked her, at her and the cleaning lady were like, You <laughs> better not. And I looked at the slot machine and I just let it go oh, all shit. over the slot oh. machine, bro. Straight Linda Blair status. I'll be oh, like, God, oh, full exorcist, you know? His head was spinning and it everything. was it was all bad. You should have played it and see if it made it give it look. Dog you played it right so, up. <laughs> look it. Okay. <laughs> fucking all Shay, can you up. repeat that, please? <laughs> oh, I'm saying. Maybe that'll be good luck. Maybe you should have just played that slot right after that. You see what I mean? <laughs> Look, she was back there laughing right now because I told her I, I told her that. The next day, show me which one it was. It's probably lucky. You know what I'm saying? There's something special. I got to play that machine. She refused to take me. No, she was embarrassed. So so then, then everybody would be around there. That's him. He's the one. Right? It. They had like yellow tape around so there. <laughs> so, then they, so then they get me in the wheelchair. And then they gave me in the wheelchair, whatever. They're putting me in the wheelchair, and, and they're, like, escorting me out, whatever. They got the medics. They got security, whatever. And apparently, she's really embarrassed. She was worried. You know what I mean? Like, she was worried, like, oh, my God. Like, they're going to kick us out. They're going to ban us, whatever. So she's, like, apologizing, trying to do damage control. And they told her, this is nothing. This happens all the time. This, is, this happens. But I want to know, for them to say I was... I was mild. I wonder what the fuck, like, they, what they've seen. Oh, like, what do you, uh, you know I'm what I'm sure saying? they've they, seen some shit. Because they told her, oh, he's so polite. He's not fighting us. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was, I was just out. Oh, so, see, you're, you're like me. Like, you know, we become, like, happy uh, yeah, drunks. I have no, I don't got no kind of fight in me. Like, yeah, when no. I'm drunk, I'll put it this way. If I'm drunk and I notice tension, I'll either just leave or I start pounding water and drinking sugar-free Red Bull. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I can't. I've never understood the beer, like the beer balls. Thing. Yeah. I just don't. I don't understand that. Like that makes no sense to me. Uh, so I think you know? some people do it for that. <laughs> like, yeah, that's why. Which is so. Like, I, let I agree me grow, with you. Let me grow a set. Right. I, it's so ridiculous to me. Yeah. So so I guess she's apologizing, and then and then she's taking pictures, and she's like, apparently she's like, I'm gonna show these to him. I'm gonna show these to him. Whatever. So we go back to the Sahara, which at the time it wasn't. The, that's what. That's right. At the time they had rebranded. The Sahara got bought out. Got sold. Whatever. They were owned by the SLS group. 
They sell us hotels like they got. I think they got them like Miami. They got one like L.A. It's like a high end like boutique hotel. So they had turned the Sahara into like this all white hotel. Like everything was white. The carpet was white. The couch was white. The chair was white. The desk was white. The floors. There's mirrors on the ceiling. And then they had put mirrors on both sides of the walls. This way, like the room looks bigger. Oh well, you know they gotta. They buy. They probably pay their cleaning people extra. That, Dog, you know oh, it's man. gonna happen. All yeah, white. ceiling. <laughs> so it was crazy. So trip out. So I wake up the next morning and I'm sleeping on a hard ass couch that's in front of the bed. There's like this hard, hard couch and I'm sleeping on it, like curled up in a ball. The fetal position. Yeah. And I wake up <laughs> and I look around. I see white everywhere. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I'm this, I'm this hard ass bench. I'm like, no. No, 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 no. I thought I, I thought I was in jail. I was going to say. I thought I was in a holding cell. Or, 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 or padded, look, no padded walls, no uh, padded walls. I, I thought I was in a holding cell. Uh-huh. I thought I was in a holding cell. I was like, fuck, what did I do like, last not night? this shit again. Fuck, what did I do? I got scared, you know? Yeah. And then I got up and I realized where I was. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so then I come over to bed. I'm like, I'm like, hey, hey baby. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Fuck you. <laughs> Yo, what did I do? What? You want to know, know what you fucking did? Yeah, yeah. You want to know what you did? Uh, uh, rolls over, grabs her phone. This is what the fuck you did last night. <laughs> She's just showing me like picture after picture after picture, right? This is what you did. Look at you. Real good. Yeah. Seen better when time. Look at you. And I was like, oh my God. Babe, send those to me. She was, I'm going to fucking send them to you so you don't ever forget what the fuck you did. Stupid. You're so dumb. And she sends them to me, right? And then she's just going in. You did. She gave me the whole play by play, right? Then you did this and you were throwing, and there were kids walking by, Daniel. Kids. <laughs> there were kids walking by and you're throwing up. And, this, and so then, um, while she's talking shit, I get, the, I get the, the pictures, I save them, put them on Instagram, right? I put them on Instagram, and I'm like, yo, last night got a little crazy, like, whatever, whatever. This is my Vegas adventure. Put my phone away. I put the phone down, and then I'm like, she, she's, I'm like, you know what? I'm really sorry about that. Let me try to get a little bit of sleep, because, like, my back hurts from that bench. <laughs> so, like, I'm, I'm going to sleep a little bit, okay, babe? And she's like, fine. So I roll over, and then she grabs her phone, right? And she, I guess she goes on Instagram, and I just hear, like, about... 20 seconds later. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what happened? What happened? What? what? Cause I was just I was just like drifting off in a lot of that, right? She's like, you posted the fucking pictures? And I was just like, Yeah. Well, that's how I knew. Like, like I, it yeah. looked so funny to me. <laughs> and I, dog, I and I and trust me, I didn't laugh till I said, wait a minute, he wouldn't have posted it unless he's okay. So then yeah. I laughed and I think I commented something like Hey, next time invite me, dog. I want to go out. Like, hey, I, I want to have fun like that. Look, bro. Yeah. So, so that's actually, you know, full circle moment. I'm actually working on a project right now called A Weekend in Vegas. Oh. Oh, and the, the cover art is me on that wheelchair. Oh, that, that's, that's, the, that's, that's perfect. The actual, that's the actual that's co- the co- Here, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm pull it out. Hey, and the you cover know what? art is me on that, on that wheelchair. And, and, and like, uh, cover photography credit, dog. She, she took an epic photo right she there. She really did, though. <laughs> and usually what happens in Vegas stays there, but in this case, it created it, art. It, in it a really way. did. Yeah. Uh, it really did. It inspired an entire... <laughs> the city of Vegas. Oh, oh, hey, dog, with the effects around. Yeah, that's Looks cool, nice. right? Yeah, yeah. Looks cool, right? Hey, what did they have around you? That was ice packs, right? Uh, no, it's, uh, no, it's, a it's, uh, like a barf bag gown. Oh, oh, I thought they like put like not nah, for your nah, like, it's a, it's a um, it's like a it was like a bag because I, uh-huh. I think I had it in the room because I didn't, I ended up puking on it, so but it's like a it's like a bag and it had like <laughs> trays in it. It was weird. It had like 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 pockets. Hey, like this, to catch, this like, fool's a VIP in Vegas. Like and, and whenever he goes, they comp him one of those barf suits <laughs> automatically. They like got him on deck in the lobby. They got him hanging here. They ready they're like go. hazards here. Here you go, sir. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you can see that, but that's the that's the artwork we're doing, and fit, it's straight off of that. Fit to your your size, bro. It's straight off C- of that custom shit. You know, yeah. So yeah, man. No, Vegas is cool. You know, it's like, a, like I said, it's really a special place for me, just because like I spent so many years of my life, like yeah, when I get out, I'm gonna go to Vegas. When I, yeah. you know, so the fact that I could just do that now, just for like a fun weekend, is, is so, like a, I consider it a blessing. You know, I, 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 I want to. Of course, I had to lead into it with that, man. You guys were just on your way back, and thanks for coming, making the you know trip on your way home. Of I know. You know, dehydration kicks in, and I, man, I, and I'm saying all this stuff, and I'm like, I'm really due for Vegas, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't wait to throw up, bro. I'm, I mean, you well, know, well, you like, got the, well, you got the little one. Yeah, well, that's why it's harder to get out now. Yeah. But 
Uh, like we already hit my mom up about that. So oh, actually, go. that's who she's with right now. So okay. we can record. But uh, we hit my mom up about that. So hopefully we can get away and I can go. You know, uh, maybe uh, maybe maybe get a customized barf suit. Uh, and recommend recommend the chocolate bars that you guys uh, ate. Right. So, uh, we'll yeah. Right. Man. <laughs> Man. Hey, so. I, I kind of, you know, want to, you touched on it briefly, but established, like, we go back pretty far, dog. I, I'm, I've known you for, for quite a while now. Yeah. Um, and and the grind is, is impeccable. There, there's ups and downs, highs and lows, as as it is for everybody in, in life in general. But um, the way you've managed to maintain and, and keep going, especially um, if you want to talk about it a little, but you had to come through, you know, you were – put that put down for some years you know what i mean and yeah. and then uh but but the way you came out you hit the ground running and um you knew you had a gift for writing and rapping and and and, and being an artist and you took that and you you kept going with it and that's dope man so because bro you know there's plenty of ways you can go when you get out you yeah, know what absolutely, i mean absolutely. So, yeah. but I, I commend the dudes you know like yourself and you know even like say like bozo the homie uh ba baldachi you know some of these cats uh you know, went away for a little while, but came back more, like, almost hungrier than ever. You know what I mean? Absolutely, to, to, to be out here and do it right. Um, but go back a little bit. Um, how, how, like, even in those days, I knew you were you were, you were rapping even then. Right. Um, how how did it uh, come to where you knew when you did get out, um, this is what you wanted to do? Um, I, I think I always loved music. Like my favorite movie growing up was La Bamba, right? Like it wasn't even like Richie. Yeah, everybody loved the gangster movies, yeah. but like I like because I wanted to be Richie Valens, like for real. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I thought Brother Bob was pretty and, dope too. Doc, let me tell you something. <laughs> Bob was the I, shit. I, like I, I wanted to be, I wanted to be like Richie. I was more like Bob. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that's, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But, but like I think um, I always wanted to make music, um, mm -hmm. and then as I got older, like and started kind of making bad decisions i still wanted to make music but like the hood stuff was just regular like i always try to say that like some people got into it because they wanted to be like the biggest gangster ever some people whatever the case is right for me it was just like well these are the people that i've played little league with this these is are, all i know you know what i mean these yeah. are the people that i grew up with so of course i'm gonna go kick it with the homies yeah, yeah so that was just like normal shit but like i always wanted to make music i always had aspirations to make music. that was always my thing like that was always more important to me you know um so when i when i got popped the first time i did like nine months in the county and then i got out <clears throat> when i'm still running amok and then i remember like i, I caught a case um it was like a self-defense case um and then i um bailed out and then i caught another case uh for uh, well that one still well that shit was yeah. still pending it yeah. was a, it was a, it to me it was self it was self defense but i mean like i was really trying to take it all the way to trial it was but it was an assault with a deadly weapon with great 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 bodily injury uh -huh. um but i was really trying to fight that so i was i was bailed out and then um, while in the midst of fighting that, I caught another one for a conspiracy to commit a crime and, and armed robbery. And so um, I, I went away for five years at that point. Well, I fought for like a whole year, and then I ended up getting five. Um, I was facing a ton of time, though. I yeah. think I was facing like, at one point, I was facing like 19 years. Um, like legitimately though, yeah. not they weren't like, those weren't like fairy tale numbers. There was a legit chance that I could get 19 years. Mm -hmm. So I ended up um, getting down to five. I took that. Um, and then while I was in prison, like, I was, like, working on my working on my flow, um, really working, you know, on on, on the way I kind of rapped and shit like that. And, and from what I from what I know, uh, cats dig that in there, too, when they're when they when the homie has talent and, and they'll be the one they like not only. Um, they want you to 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 show them what you got, but then they they that's actually some good constructive criticism also. Come yeah, up. no, you like, know what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> like, homies would be ruthless, but like I was I was always pretty polished, uh -huh. so I never got a lot of. I did get a. It was funny. I never got a lot of, like hate for my skills as far as like when I would rap it, nobody would be like, oh, that's just trash. Uh -huh. But I would get you know who hated me was other homies that wanted to rap. Oh yeah, yeah. because like because the homies would be like. Nah, you gotta go listen to Hazard, dog. Like I can't explain it. He's just he sounds different. 
and then I'll rap, and they'll be like, oh, fuck this guy. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like they, they would have their own homeboys, like, yeah, that fool from the IE, though, dog. So you know? it's like kind of like the rap game. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> basically, yeah, it's like a, a miniature version of People it. People get a little mad when you can spit. You know what I'm saying? Than so, that, you know? so yeah, so um, a miniature version of it, yeah. right? But like, but um, I came home and I I I was hungry for sure. Um, and it's crazy because I I think now um, um, I think about it now like it was ten years ago that I paroled, right? Just a little bit over ten years ago I paroled. I and it's coming up ish right around now it'll be somewhere within this next month or so i could probably find it i could probably find the show if i like look for it but it'll it's been about 10 years since you guys first played me i remember when it happened i i was like you couldn't tell me shit i was so excited i remember i sat down on, on this show yeah no oh, on, yeah on the, on the b-side okay because even uh like fuck i want to say even well it was around that time still but even a little before that remember we were getting a lot of gigs Different spots and you were rocking stages too. Yeah, was that be? It was around that, was that time, right? That it was, was right after. after. Okay. So so okay. So it was 2012 when I paroled. Okay. It was sometime middle of 2012 when when Choice One spun my shit. It was a, a yeah. free. Uh, I had a freestyle over Eminem's role model. It was called Alcoholic, which Alcoholic. was on your uh your debut uh album. Yeah. Uh, that it was it was a it was a what you call it? It was a, um. It was a freestyle I had over the role model beat. Role model, yeah. And what up, Choice? He played it. What's up, Choice? <laughs> and he played it. And uh, I remember, I remember watching. I could see that they had. You guys had like the 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 stream from the show, and I'm sitting on a computer watching it. And I remember you guys had got up. He's gonna spin a set, and you guys were gonna interview somebody after. I remember. You got up to grab a beer, and then Wacko was 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 um, hosting with you at the time. Yeah, yeah. Wacko g- gets up, takes like two steps, stops. He, he, he hears me rhyming, turns around and walks over to Choice. Who is this? <laughs> That's the Choice told me he asked him after. Yeah. You know, he's, he's talking to him, and then I, I hear him. They're talking. I see them talking, and he walks away. And then you come out from the beer, and you kind of got your head cocked like this, and you walk over, and then... You know, you talk to him, and then this will choice while on air grabs his phone. He's like, oh, "Are you watching?" And I'm like, "Yeah." He goes, "Yeah." Both these guys just asked me about you, yeah, and man. I was so hyped, bro. I was just like, F-, "Like you couldn't tell me shit that day. You couldn't yeah. that night. You couldn't tell me." I remember I showed it to my brother. I brought my brother over. I'm like, "Check this out. Check this out." And like, like, you know, there he's, he's playing a record. My brother just looked at me. He's all happy for me and my, my my baby brother. So like that was. I gotta really. I all. I always say that though. Like I always try to to give credit where it's due. You guys were the first people to fuck with heads, like for real. Hey, and you know, um, you know, I I want to lead into something else in a sec to kind of come more forward. Uh, but you know, there there's some to be said about cats like real genuine dudes like Choice One, man. That's like, you know, we're 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 different skin colors, but I consider that dude like a. But you know what I mean? Yeah, like absolutely. We're, Thousand percent. He, he's a he's like a a brother, bro. Like. The thing is, the relationship, and we we met each other through hip hop. Actually, we were on another. Uh, on a, shout out to Break Beats and Rhymes, dog. We were. Yeah. Uh, he was a, uh, he was the DJ for All Angles at the time, uh-huh. and that's how we met him. And then, dude, we just chopped it up right away, and we even asked him if he'd like to sometime maybe guest DJ on the show. And then he became one yeah. of our regular DJs. Yeah. But what I was became getting my at, twin brother after. Yeah, that. and and, <laughs> and him and Shay are gonna make the new twins. Uh, yeah, that'd be that'd be new, amazing. We gotta find that photo. We twins. did a photo shoot one time. That's yeah, dude, it was funny, <laughs> dog. Like they were twin brothers. Hey, but I feel like I've seen that. I feel like Troy showed showed that. To we me. we never got to release a bunch. of All these changes happened at once, yeah. and some of the promo didn't make it out. But yeah. uh, anyways, I was just getting at like there's something to be said about genuine dudes in your corner. Um, like choice one, like I've been lucky to have one or two. I mean, not a whole bunch, but a few people in my corner sure. that like they believe in you. And there so much is when they go other places, they let other people know about what you're doing and all that. And that, that that's something uh, that don't come around that often a- anymore. Is I don't know if it ever did very often as it should. Cause there ain't nothing wrong with with bigging your brother up and all that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. just some people have a hard time doing it. But shout out to people like Choice, who who uh, he he saw your talent and he de- he he genuinely wants to see you win. And that there's something to be said for that. That's man. so dope, man. I I I love that dude to this day. Yeah, he was at my wedding. You know what I'm saying? Like he yeah. introduced me to my. Le- you know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> like real, like on some, just on some real, like on some real homie shit. You yeah, know, like yeah. a real good dude. And um, he um, 
he he literally heard about me off of a like a two three minute acapella that I had mm-hmm. on YouTube. I had nothing, so I was like, I gotta put something up. Mm-hmm. So I did that, and then when I would be like, Yo, I rap, people would be like, Show me something. And I'll send them the link to that YouTube video, and it was just on my phone. And I remember, um, like, my cousin was telling my cousin new choice and my cousin's telling telling choice like yo you got to listen so he tells her like well send me something so then my my prima sent him she said he said send send him something so i sent him a link to a couple youtube those two youtube videos where i was rapping acapella and off of that he told her i want to meet that guy like that dude's dope i want he's dope so then i met him in a club and it was hilarious because the night i met him i'm chopping it up with him um, is the night I actually met my Hannah for the first time, but I didn't know her at the time. So we were chopping it up. And he was telling me, I like this bar. I like how you said this and this. He was like breaking certain shit down. He's like, I fuck with you, man. I want to work with you. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> so he goes, <laughs> so at the time I'm, I'm, I'm single and ready to mingle. You know, I'm from fresh out. And it was like, my, it was technically my birthday party. So I'm like celebrating my first birthday as an adult since I turned 18. You know, I, I I'd never had like an adult birthday. Right. So so I'm like, I'm celebrating. I'm going crazy, you know. And uh, he goes, choice goes. All right. But he goes, I got to go spin. He turns around and he looks at me. He goes, both these bitches are by and they're with the business. Hold on. So he turns around. He call. Hey, this is an artist that I work with. He's a dope rapper. They, they call him Hazard. Hazard me. And I don't remember the two young ladies names. Me, so and so and so and so. He's like, you guys are all consenting adults. Have fun. And he walks away. <laughs> That's the kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> That's the kind of guy we're talking about. Expert you know? wingman. Right just, a, just, are you kidding me? That dude. Wingman level 1000. <laughs> just, just, just on God mode. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, just... yeah, yeah, no. Well, I remember he brought you through too. Remember, um, we did that, um, that show. I think we were on our third year of the B side and we did a show at, uh, over in Hacienda Heights. We did like a live show. Yep. Or we had, you know, we had booked some uh, artists. We book some of the artists yeah. that have been on the and show. you opened it up i remember too that, that yeah because i i think um if i'm not mistaken it was like who was running late i think it was like either like pause one or somebody yeah it was somebody they were running late yeah. and, and they're like stall the show what are we gonna do whoever you guys had that was supposed to rap yeah was late yeah and i remember um and then asthma and then asthma was supposed to be a, asthma was running late he walks in the door and then choice is like yo this guy can rap if you give him a mic yeah, I remember and you, you guys are just like all right so shoot him the mic and i just started rhyming and it was the, it was probably like the best like way that i could have introduced myself uh-huh. you know what i'm saying because sure. yeah. everybody's like yo that mother that yeah fool right and, there yeah. and it, it was it off, like though. and it was that that thing of okay when you first got who okay who is this guy who, right he's just, he's gonna open the show let's see what he got and then right. you, you gave it to him man and and, and it was a, in it for me it was a beautiful thing i felt i felt um that's the kind of guy he is right like he's like just show up with me, bro, and 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 let me let me take you, you know, let me take you around. I'm gonna introduce you to people. That's really the that's you know, he's just a genuine dude that way. He's all about like us and we. You know what I'm saying? It's all about the team. He's the ultimate team player. Shouts out choice one. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But I, I definitely that's 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 such a dope uh thing that you brought up, Whitey, because like for real, it's one of my fondest memories. That whole like first like six months of me coming home and trying to figure out what was what. Um, it was a, it was a lot. There was a lot going on, a lot of moving pieces, but it was just um, it felt like it, it it was dope because it was kind of like the the type of stuff. There was a lot of the moments that you see like in an NWA movie. You, that, you, you know what I'm saying? That you see like like how did how did this happen? You like know, it becomes moment, right? yeah. yeah, it becomes cliche sometimes when people overdo it or whatever. But you know when they say like hip hop saved me it, it kind of it, it did for some people because it, it kept you uh, uh productive and busy and also uh having that uh that thought there's more out there for me man I'm good at this and I'm hearing right. it from people and this is fresh out Doug so that I mean it's a, it's, it's a good route to go that that way instead of it, it was it was tough bro because there was times where like like it was on on a, on a on a couple different levels one I had to I had to pee for these fools like like at first, I think it was like four. I had to pee like once a week, twice in the office and then twice in my pad. And then it t- right away they could tell that I wasn't like gonna be fucking around at least with drugs. Yeah. So yeah. it was like twice a month, once in the office, once in my pad. And then like this fool would bring the kit, and they were not at first they were not playing. And then um, they they seen that I was kind of cool, but like I'll be at shows and like 
Yo, Haz, you want to hit this? Nah, I'm good, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm cool. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then that so that was it, that was a difficult thing, like kind of trying to stay above the bullshit that way. But then also for me, like I'm fresh out. I'm just home. I'm like super on my P's and Q's with certain things, very mm-hmm. respectful and yeah. just trying to be, you know, and like some fools got e- got crazy egos and like I, I would trip out because I like because I would have never heard of these. So I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. But yeah. he walks in with like a head that doesn't fit through the door. and He's like mm-hmm. an asshole. Mm-hmm. You know, motherfuckers like real, real, like flagrantly. And so there was a couple of times where I was like, I'm gonna go to jail. People, actually, <laughs> people <laughs> they walk in almost like a, with a sense of entitlement. Sometimes. It's the we, it's yeah. the weird and, and, and the, the craziest part was what I know now because at the time I didn't know who nobody was what anybody did. At the time I was kind of trying to figure that out, but now that I think back, like the biggest like like assholes or dickheads or whatever, like I'm like whatever happened to that guy? Oh yeah, like, yeah. I don't even know what it, you know what I mean. Like whatever, oh. whatever even he, he, happened. Right now he's no, being an no. asshole somewhere in his living room. Yeah. Or something. Right, it's, it's the weirdest. It's the he's crazy. yelling at the TV. He's I'm right something. here, brother. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> right now bro. he's yelling at a commercial. And he's TV. fucking ranting to his yeah. fifty Facebook friends. Yeah, it's crazy. Trying like, to kick his cat or something. You know what I'm saying? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Here, like you know, before we we keep this thing going, I, I want to say so, and I commend, like I said, uh, like people who could come out. And and go the the right route, no matter how hard it is, because it's easier to fall back, and and do what you might have been doing to get you there in the first place. Yeah. Because these roadblocks come along, and they and they, and I know they're really discouraging, bro. And like, I'll ch- I'll keep this quick, but just you know, for a personal thing, um, my youngest brother, dog, he did a lot of time too, and he he started getting into programs in there. He's got real good at doing the the firefighting stuff. Okay. So. He's they recommend him and everything, dog. So he's been real positive. Keep, you know, keeping his mind right, working out, doing everything he needs to do to train for this program coming up. Right. The program came up. It came his time and he's no problem, dog. He goes in there to, you know, because you got to piss, too, before you go in there. They want to make mm-hmm. sure they got the right guys there. They come and they call him over and say he didn't pass. And they were saying uh, supposedly hallucinogenic. Now, trip out on this shit. And this is real life. This is not. Like something anybody could make up. My brother, I know he was doing the right things, but he literally they before they went to that thing, his his lady and my mom went with him for the drive to drive him down there. They ate at this place and the sandwich had fucking poppy seeds on it or something. Dog, that shows up as a fucking uh, some type of loose. I don't know if it's hallucinogenic. It comes up as something. On a test, like though. An opioid or something. Opioid, of, yeah, there there you go. Opioid, opioid, yeah. opioid, there you go. And, bro, and, dog, he was, like, that could have been a moment where he was completely discouraged. Sure. You know, because I started thinking, if that was me, I probably would have flipped out, bro. Sure. Like, sure. He, he's done all that work. But, you know, um, and we try to figure out. My mom's real, you know, religious and stuff. And trying to figure out. I talked to my mom a lot. And, you know, maybe it was meant. There's got to be a reason, right? And And not too long ago. His his uh, his sister, which is my stepsister, passed away, and like I, we figure that might be it because um, he would have never got to because he would have been in that program. They keep him there. You don't get no contact with somebody for like the first six months mm. while they train, and uh, he wouldn't have got to say see his sister or anything um, during that time. But that's all we could think of. And now, luckily though, um, you know he went through the process as parole officer and everybody they, they, they know he's not lying to him and sure. so he's back on track but he has to wait for the next call now but it's just things like that happen to cats all the time that get out from doing years and yeah. you don't see all these things but it, it it's enough to make somebody want to just say yeah. fuck this they, they dog, just, you big know? discouragement they yeah. forget it, you know? it fuck it, this it, shit it's dog. it man it's, it's hard bro but sometimes you just gotta a lot of people say like oh you gotta stay humble or you gotta you really gotta humble yourself and and i i know you know i remember this the, one of my one of my favorite it's like a bittersweet lyric for me from from uh, from nip he says never let a hard time humble us you know what i'm saying and and i understand what he means by that you know what i'm saying like like just because just because you hit you know some adversity, if you feel like you're that motherfucker, you should still feel like you're that motherfucker. Yeah. So I, I respect that side of it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But when I came home, I, I did have to like humble myself, and I had to understand like, all right, look, you're you're from the smallest things, it's stupid, superficial stuff. Your clothes are not about to be about shit. You know what I'm saying? You don't. You're not making enough money. You're trying to take care of your child. You, you're you're gonna look like a fucking convict fresh out, bro. 
that look that where you're just fucking basketball shorts and t-shirts and you're fucking way too skinny. You know what I'm saying? You got that after prison glow. That's what you about to look like for a second. Get over it. And then like, you know, add so you know what I mean? And, and, and then um, you got to understand that like nobody owes you a fucking thing. Like that's the big one. Like a lot yeah. of times people feel like, oh, and that, I and can't catch a, I can't catch a break. Mother, the world don't owe you like, one. I, tr- I try to tell that to everybody. You know people blame how they grew up or, or my parents didn't yeah. do this. I don't give a fuck. You're an adult now. And Deal you got to, yeah. Look, sometimes did, did some people have an easier way of it. Sure. Yeah. Is that yeah. fair? No, but that's, that's fucking life, right? Yeah, so is, I had to like, I had to just realize that. Like mm-hmm. I had to humble myself. The world don't owe me nothing. Walking around with this big old fucking chip on your shoulder yeah. trying to mad dog everybody or hey, hey that fool bumped into me and didn't say excuse me mm-hmm. you know what I'm i always say a lot of times people people say that uh prison is about respect and i say to a degree i think i think i think it's really just a lot of common courtesy mm-hmm. it's such a basic like because yeah. people be like oh prison is about respect or how and then they start naming shit you're like th- th- those are all just like common courtesy things that you would think a normal fucking human would do yeah but we're like we've degraded so much as a society exactly. that like common courtesy gets mistaken for like that guy's a real respectful guy. Well, what? Oh, because he bumped things. Like, oh, excuse me, excuse me. That's a fucking courteous thing to do. You know or, what I mean? Or it's like when you hold the door open for somebody and yeah. they just walk through and they don't say, what, they don't, don't even say thanks yeah. for holding you know, or nothing. Just they exactly because the whatever. world is such a discourteous place, oh, right? Yeah. So yeah. that like that's what I had to learn too. You know, and I remember like I remember being um in I was in Victorville. I was in Victorville for the weekend. <laughs> Um, I was with the homie And it was like A birthday party for uh, I, was, I was with God Beats actually and, was, and I'm fresh out Like two Two three weeks home And we, we We were going up there For a birthday party for his, for his chick And he's like Hey come with me bro Like I'll introduce you To some people Whatever uh, Just on some Chilling shit like, Alright cool So I'm up in Victorville And We're It was one of them we're in a liquor store. It's one of the situations where you don't know where the line's coming from. Is it coming from like like the left side of the register or the right or whatever, right? And and there was like a big old uh, aisle in the middle. You couldn't see around the other side. So I'm standing there and I, I go forward. And this dude goes, you didn't see me standing here? And I'm like, oh, no, my bad, man. Go right ahead. You know what I'm saying? And he says something else. He's like, oh, well, you know, he said something. And I'll never forget. I just looked at him and I just looked at the sky and I was like, <sighs> deep breaths. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I remember I was my my guy. He, he's standing next to me. This full guy beats is like, oh, I just hear him go. Oh. <laughs> like I could just hear it. His voice is like, oh. and I literally I looked up. I'll never forget. I looked up. I just breathed real heavy. <sighs> and I don't know. I don't know what I looked like when I did it. Um, but I definitely took like a really deep breath and I just breathed it out. And it was loud. It was definitely loud. And I'll never forget the, the the gentleman goes, Hey man, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's like, I'm 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 I'll never forget this shit. He'll go he goes, Hey man, I'm I'm sorry. He must he he must have saw that look or sigh before, huh? <laughs> exactly. So so he was right like before he got clocked. He was like, time. Yeah, he was like he was like, My bad. The Bruce I, I'm Banner. really sorry about that. You know what I'm saying? And it was the funniest thing because I was like you're good, man. Has turned green. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you're good, man. But it's like little, like little things like that. You're you're completely right, Rabs. It 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 is like it's a lot. And then the fact that not only was I trying to come home and get right and and, and raise my child and, and and not go back in and all this, but then I had the fucking the idea to want to be a fucking rapper. And behind all of that, you know, oh yeah, I'm gonna. And it's like it's one of the coldest, craziest, weirdest. Um, um, most Tra- transition uh. Hot cold games You could get into mm-hmm. You know what I mean Like oh you want to stay out you, What are you going to do I'm going to rap yeah. <laughs> Good luck bro yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying <laughs> Hey but you you, you you kept the course bro Let, let me um, We're, we're going to talk about You know uh, Some of the Projects and stuff And I was going to talk about that now But you kind of touched on the uh, You know To a degree You keep humble as a human being but in the rap game, you still got to be confident in what you're and what you're presenting to the people, yeah. and all that. Uh, with with you, where does that come from, bro? Because even um, I remember when you were fresh out, when we were doing, we were getting show, we were getting you. I remember we were getting spots like, hey, yeah. has Kaz if he wants to rock, yeah. rock. There's a spot open, and you were you yeah, were you down. Great at, about that. You were down every time, and you were. But like um, when you rock on the stage, bro, it's like you know. Um, I don't know what the word is for it, but you're you're there for the moment, bro, and you and and you you could tell the confidence, and then you deliver to yeah. the people with that confidence. Uh, where does that come from for you, especially, you know, not having as much of the 
the the training being you know locked down for a bit um the, i think i think the stage presence yeah confident. yeah i think i think i was just always comfortable up there mm-hmm. it, it, it there was never um it was never embarrassing or difficult for me um getting on stage and and and, and doing that is probably the funnest part of music yeah. for me it's the easy part. You already wrote the music. You you got it. You, you know, and that's you where you let you get you know? to let that energy out of what made you write that shit. Exactly. In the first place. Yeah. And it's so funny you say that because yeah. I remember there being times where I would get hyped about a certain lyric, and I'm like, why am I so hyper right there? And it's like oh, I really <laughs> feel that bar. You know what I mean? And so um, I, I really um, I really think it's just because it's it's really what I was like born to do. I'm confident on stage. I've never I've never not been. It feels good. I love it. Like I love every every part of that. is is fun to me. It's it's like I said. It's the fun part of music. It's it's you already came up with the record. You already wrote your rhymes. You sat there. You recorded it. You you put it out. You have people listening. They want they want to hear you do that song. You know what I'm saying? It's like the ultimate um like reward to me as a musician is mm-hmm. to be able to perform your music to people that want to hear it. You you know um, obviously part of the plan and make a living off this art um obviously but th- i mean that feeling um that you get when someone could come up to you and give you daps or say this song helped me here in this situation or or come to you and just recite a fucking verse that you spit before yeah. that feels so good and i know like you know what i mean i know what you're talking about when you say that bro it's that's uh it's almost like they're paying you but with a compliment they're paying you it's the it's the wildest thing Rabs, because like i've had it more lately you know what i'm saying like with the, with the little oh, bit we'll, of, oh we're gonna get into that <laughs> with a little bit of success yeah. that i've had like i've had it a little more lately and i get recognized and I, like we'll go out and I'll, I'll get you know i'll get people just coming up to me and it's funny because for me my 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 biggest thing with with um with that is like i know the kind of music that i make it speaks to a certain de- demographic of people so it's like my supporters like mad dog me and look like they want to bang on me. Like when they see like when they see me, <laughs> they just be staring like real, real hard. And they walk up like, hey, are, are you that full hazard? <laughs> yeah, what's cracking, dog? <laughs> oh, man, I'm a big fan, homie. Like it's, it's funny <laughs> to me. Like like it's funny because it happens like all the time. I'm like, okay, does that fool want to fight yeah. me or does that feel like my music? Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? With the meanest nah, face so there is telling it, you no, he's a fan. It, it's because they're pumped up, dog, yeah. and it's, that's, it's the to wildest, them, that's yeah. how they, yeah. It, and it's the wildest thing because you be seeing these fools like, like tatted back, you know, banged out, and they come up like, hey, fuck, I, I really fuck with your shit, yeah. ass. Like, when, like, like you said, like when you said this, 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 X, Y, Z, when you said this, bro, I, I rock with you every week. <laughs> and, and it's just like, it's such a blessing for me because um, it's, it's, Ultimately, music, uh, not all the time. I guess sometimes it could be just bubblegum shit, but music comes from a personal place. Even if it's about, you know, some, like, not deep not deep topic, it still comes from a personal. If you're talking about, like, partying, you're, you're drawing on your experiences, yeah. like, partying or whatever. And right? what a good time and is what it, and yeah. what it feels like. Exactly. So when people are able to connect with something that was so personal, I think it's like a... It's almost like validation or vindication that you're not crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I had this thought and it was able to connect with so many people, but it was a very personal thought. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, wow, there's people that really feel like this. And so it lets you know. It, I think I think the reason why people get attached to musicians is because they're like, you're saying the thing. Like, I get this a lot from my supporters. If I could rap, I would rap exactly how you rap. Yeah. You're saying the thing that I wish I could say, but like you're just better with your words. But how, I feel exactly the same way when you. So that's the dopest feeling for that. Lets me know that like I'm really, really using my gift, you know, in in the right oh, way. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I really got people like they really rock with me and tell me all the time like, "Yo, has like I feel like when you when you do your thing and I listen like if I could rap, that's how I would do it." Yeah, and that, like, that's that's the biggest compliment, you know what I mean? That's but, hard. And then that dope, um, I seen that co-sign too, like from somebody like Julio G. He posted you on his, like, yeah. Man, that's a like that's a legendary dude in himself, and he and he was recognizing what you do. That was that had to be pretty Shouts dope. Shouts to Julio G. Yeah, um, dog, this dude like basically helped raise me. Yeah. yeah. As a kid, 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 like some of the first times I can listen back, you know, because this is you know, I remember obviously Big Boy, obviously the Baker Boys, but mm-hmm. Julio G. Like West Side Radio is like. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that was, like, the real hard, like, that was the hard, hard shit. You Him know what I'm and, uh, and Tony G, like, I always tell them, I, I consider them 
mentors to me, whether sure. they want that uh, they want that role or not. To me, they are, and, and and I say that because as far as this broadcasting thing, dog, and and we've been doing this B side for you know almost twelve years now, mm-hmm. been doing my podcast. I know there's a lot of stuff out there people could listen to now, but um, I, I'm definitely we've said it before, but I'm I'm not here to do this for me to be popular, bro. I I love doing this shit because it means something to me. And I just want to make sure we, we have the best conversations with artists and let people know about them a little more. Sure. I, I'm not into all the, the cheese mess stuff too much, man. That That's for other people. And that's why they blow up more than me. I know, I, you know, a lot of the people say controversial things on purpose to get a little, you know, they want yeah, that sure. back and forth. Sure, sure, that's sure. just, I, I, I'm not into all that. I'm here for the real shit and, and for the long haul, which is why we've been here so long, but those two dudes i consider um like mentors to me because of the broadcasting thing and and what they've done as far as putting music out new music uh seeing new artists yeah so when i got to like interview both those guys like uh julio g and i told him bro you know this i've been wanting to sit down with you bro like you were one of the ones who made me want to do this you know what i'm saying absolutely but yeah it had to be said let let's uh we're, we're gonna get into some more and some artists that you work with in different things too but first um, before we get into that, because I, I do want to, uh, in the middle, to, to break up the interview, I, I, I do want to play. I'll, I'll tell you what we're going to play in a minute, but um, uh, I, let them know the what work you got out there already, your album, um, your original album, all the stuff that, that's out for people that might not know. Because a lot of people, like you said, um, you know, as of the recent, maybe the last year, year and a half, yeah. they're really starting to catch on finally to what Hazard's been doing. And, and we you know been seeing you do your thing like you you mentioned it bro for a long time um but let the people know what is out there that they can go check out that's uh, videos and everything bro. yeah absolutely check my youtube um <laughs> youtube.com slash hazard tv is with a three uh i guess there's like a gamer that spells his name like me so uh-huh. so hazard tv with a three h-a-z three rd tv you can go on my youtube and you can see the progression i mean, i still have my i still have my old videos up like from like 2013, 2014, mm-hmm. 2015, um, you know, probably a, a 2015 was probably when I had the, um, the like, I guess you would say like the peak of like my local little bit of success. I had dropped a record called Start a Riot, and a lot of people were rocking with that one. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, and this is classic. and this is before like all the Black Lives Matter protests and mm-hmm. all that stuff. Like this is you know like we were talking about things you know. Before it was trendy to talk about, like a lot of people. Had this asked was me, on, like you know, this was you know after like the Trayvon, the uh, yeah, um, after Trayvon a, a certain Martin. couple of them. Before it even got more outrageous than it, it than it, it was. Yeah, it was you already to talk about it. Yeah, 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 it was already flagrant for me. But yeah, it, then it, it just got, you know, it's like everybody got a camera in their in, in their pocket. Mm-hmm. So it's like you know, it just we started seeing it more. There was no. I always say this, like, oh you know, yeah, people you know what been mean? getting beat down. You know, I always say this, like, there was a reason that I did that record, probably, you know, three years ahead of all the shit in the news. For me, it was like, bro, this has been happening, but now we have now we have videographic evidence of it. You know, it's just disgusting. How many times can you watch a a, a man? You know die on camera for no good reason mm-hmm. like i'm sorry like i don't care like you know uh uh commission of a misdemeanor does not equal a death sentence we have we have laws and penalties for certain laws yeah. for a re and i hate when people say well if he was just at home yeah, being a boy scout I nothing would have happened but, but you, you know fucking jaywalking doesn't mean you get yeah. fucking choked to death like this yeah. you know what i'm saying so so i i had really felt that way so 2015 is when riot came out you guys can look that one up it, it's it's you know it's still on youtube it's on my youtube like i say haz 3rd tv film right on, here at the show if you go on spot film right here yeah, yeah fun fact hey fun right fact. in front cameos from rabbit and myself actually. right oh, and I, I, filmed I, I, right in front of uh of uh the b-side it shot. was a crazy shoot too and and you know this to go back this is how long you know we've been knowing what you're doing and stuff and 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 uh, being part of it and, and uh, you know, uh, doing what we can to, uh, to, to I mean, maybe shed a little further light on it, sure. not only with our platform, yeah, yeah. but our space. You no, know, you and guys and always Wack, been Wacko gracious. filmed that and, that, and that was a fucking dope. Uh, Wacko did a great job Amazing. on that video. That he, he made me a movie, Brian. Yeah. I was so happy with it. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I do got to say that you, you guys, you know, beyond playing my shit or whatever y'all really kind of like 
put your money where your mouth was because you could have said, yeah, has we fuck with your shit. Anytime you got got some, you, you you know we'll put it out, and that would have been that would have been enough. But it was like, I mean, there was times where I used the B side as a rehearsal space. Oh yeah, there yeah. was times where um, I mean, we threw events here. Um, you know, we um, you know, we obviously we shot the riot video here. That was probably the Sh- biggest thing that we did in front. I want to shout but, out uh, also. You know, we mentioned it earlier, but Big Jeans in the building too, and he's yeah, another one uh, of them, the cats that um, he really. Uh, took an initiative in himself because he saw the talent in you um, yeah. to do what he could to, to, to help, to help further and, whatever. Yeah, and shouts to Big Gene because, yeah, yeah it's like I'm, I'm very big on like now that I have a little bit of perspective with, you know, how long I've been doing this now, um, it's kind of cool to see certain people that, um, that, really, that really did stand in my corner when there wasn't anything in it to gain for them other than them just believing in somebody that they thought was dope. There was no, like, there was zero, like, real um, big return for them. You know what I'm saying? None of that. That's you guys, your, you guys genuinely That's your humility fucked, yeah. talking, and that's important. You said that's, you, that's you, real you talk. You guys genuinely fucked with me on that. I'm just on some, like, this dude's dope, and, and we think he's cool. So, yeah, whatever we could do. And I genuinely appreciate that. Like, that's just dope as fuck to me. Like, damn, really? Like, really? Hey. Like, thank you, you know? Because, like, I look at it now, like, fuck, I got to fucking, it cost me for every, like, Every fucking thing that I do costs some money, and I don't, I don't, I don't mind it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm fortunate enough to be in a place where that, where that's okay. But like, literally, like I try to tell people when they want to book me for shows and shit, like, bro, it costs me like three, four hundred dollars to leave my house now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because like I'm bringing, oh, it's I'm just bringing that it to, to drive down the street now. Well, well with the, well, okay. <laughs> so I, I say this: it's like a hundred, a hundred for the gas tank, yeah, exactly. right? Really, a hundred for the gas tank. I gotta go see my barber if I'm gonna go out to your event. You know what I'm saying? And then I gotta bring a videographer with me. And 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 then I might have like you know another person or two with me, so it's like it literally the very and, bare minimum. And throw a couple like, of drinks in that, oh, yeah. right? You're the very bare minimum is, is four hundred dollars for me to leave my house. So it's like it's crazy because I'm like, damn. At the time, at that time when I was doing what I was doing, like it was all on a hope and a dream, and a, and a, a fucking maybe buying somebody pizza here or a case of beer there. You know what I'm saying? Like, that yeah. was it. Like, and so I genuinely, like, shout out to the B-side. You got, you know, Drac, everybody behind the scenes. What you know up, Drizak? Uh, um, um, you know, Wacko, one of the original hosts. You yeah, know, with man. With you, Rabs, Whitey. I really appreciate you guys because y'all really held me down, uh, you know, and then obviously Gene, uh, Big Gene, but you guys really held me down when, like I said, there was no incentive in it, you know, other than, like, you guys fucking with somebody that you thought was dope. And, and you know, so I I, I appreciate that. You, you know? know what was cool is you know um, uh, that that video and that that whole time it was it was fun. Part of the fun fact, like we literally, if you guys I bet the video is epic. What it's talking about is epic. And and uh, and keep in mind again, this came out even before the George Floyd and and and, and you know all the countless uh, you know uh, horrible things that went on since then, mm-hmm. uh, senseless killings and you know like they say uh you know cops are not supposed to kill guilty people innocent or guilty people i mean that's what the court of law is for like let them have their day but you're not supposed to be judge jury and uh, executioner executioner all in one shot exactly um i remember it's just the way the laws are set up shortly after too you had the one um dealing with the immigration issues too i remember i think that one was before modern day slavery was first slavery oh okay modern day slavery was first video thank you man another important thing yeah Yeah, wacko did his thing on that one Um, And uh, and another thing that's coming uh, to light again with like you know with the street vendors and yeah. things that are going on with the street vendors it's like another important video but you talk about besides just being lyrical and you yeah you came out with on the Eminem piece you know that's <clears throat> your style is the the lyrics and everything and and uh one of the things I've always appreciated about about hip hop um but you're really also talking about some real shit and with lyrics, still able to make people stay tuned and listen. Because I, I think a lot of the times things get, you know, so-called, uh, they call dumbing it down sometimes you yeah, know, yeah. to get a point across. Maybe some people just don't have that in them to write beyond a certain level. But um, but I'm saying you're able to keep that all in intact. There's lyrics there, but you're, you're hearing a message and it's it's important. Um, I wanted to talk. We're going to get into the, the, that video in a sec. But uh, when we were filming that. I believe that was right after, like, because we've been at the spot for a cool minute, man, and uh, B-Side Shop's been here a while. Um, next door is when the deli 
barely moved in. Yeah. And I remember, and it was also. They were still building it. it, it they were still building it. It yeah. was kind of a weird. Oh, that's what it was. They were still building. Yeah. But it was kind of a weird weather day, too. It started raining. It, 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 it rained a little, but it never started pouring, really. So we were able to film. Mm-hmm. But that gray sky just, it, 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 like, it almost felt like. It was an effect he put in, but that was the real shit. It is he, wild. I remember we were he, so... He, had, he amplified it. Get, don't get me wrong. Yeah, but, but it was crazy. And uh, what I was going to get at, though, is, dog, we had... There was cops hired to yeah. to with their weapons and everything to be part of the video. And I yeah. remember all the neighbors in the buildings. Oh, and we yeah. had to, like, they, tell they them, like, What's going this on is just a video. This? We're yeah. filming a video. And people were, like, really interested watching. But we could have scared the shit out. All these cops looked like they were... Hey, I kid you not. I'll oh. never forget. They they came out of came spilling out the bar down here. Uh-huh. And, uh, and they were looking. Like, what the hell is going on? I had to stop what I was doing because it was a scene. It was a scene in the video where you got the mob of people. And were they, they beating and they, Casper and they, at and that they, point? And they rushed. Yeah. Him. Oh, they're about to. Yeah. Oh, they're and about they, to. And they and they shout rushed it. The, and shout out to Casper, man. <laughs> my, this is my qualifier right there. So they shot. Uh, they 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 rushed the cops. Like the cops were in the line. And they, so right before we did that, I was like, oh shit. I'm looking back. We got all the protest signs, everything like that. And I'm looking back. I'm like, we should probably let these guys know. So I, I ran over there. I'm like, hey, how we doing? I, I, I'm a I'm a rap artist. I go by Hazard. This is my music video here today. Um, they're like, oh, okay. I was gonna ask, what the hell is going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, no, no. Look, it's, it, these are all these are all actors. Mm-hmm. Some paid more than others, um, but you know, everybody's basically eating pizza for the day for their fee. And this is what we're doing. And they were like, oh, okay. I was like, so we're going to be here for a few more hours. So I would really appreciate you guys not calling the cops. And they're yeah. like, yeah, absolutely. And we go, oh, look, they're already here. And <laughs> it's crazy. And it's crazy because we actually pulled that off without any police interference. Yeah. Now, the, a couple of times, I think they I think they drove by. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, we seen like two or three patrol cars. They saw the cameras, though. They, and they saw, saw the, we Yeah, were they saw what we were doing. They didn't, they didn't even come by. You know, they these guys again. Not, <laughs> right? For the most part, because we've had a, you know, a few pretty crazy events at this spot over the years, bro. Sure. And for the most part. The city and the and the um, the authorities have been pretty cool with us for the most part. They know we're we're trying to do something bigger than what what the what the uh, stereotypical thing they see is. They might see someone smoking or whatever, whatever it is, drinking right. a beer. The the thing is, um, I think they see that we're, we're we have a we're, we have something bigger in mind. We're 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 showcasing dope talent here. Yeah, and, and, and they've they've been pretty cool with us. I will say that. Man. And 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 how many years? And you know, knock on yeah. wood. But in how many years? And, and no no craziness, like no wild incident that we go. Oh well, there was the stabbing nothing, of nothing too know, vicious. You know what I'm saying? The, <laughs> the stabbing of 2012, and yeah, then there yeah. was the shooting of 2015. <laughs> like you guys have genuinely had a really positive. Um, presence in the community So yeah. like I understand it's hip hop And they automatically Don't like us for that Yeah But you know what I mean You guys have had a positive influence In, in, in the yeah. community You know what I'm yeah. saying Hey man And uh, you know that That's uh, I think what we're trying to do Without uh, Blatantly putting it out there Like Hey we're doing this For To help people Like We, we kind of do a lot of our things Kind of Under the radar a little bit sure. Because it's It's for the purpose of it Not for the accolades And all that shit Yeah but, absolutely You know To each his own Whatever But hey We got a lot more to talk about uh, Give the full description bro um, Songs produced by Got Beats uh, Video directed by My boy Wacko And it took It was It filmed right in front of The B-side shop One drizzly December Morning and afternoon um, uh, Cameos from Let me see Uh Obviously, Rabs. And, I'm in there uh, somewhere. I think I had a sign, or I'm one of the writers. Rabs and Whitey. I had um, my mean face on in them. Uh, <laughs> my boy Casper was in it. We had a few. Cool, Casper got tossed you know, onto the police car. We had a yeah. few cool people in it, but um, one of my favorite moments, real quick, and you guys can get into it. There's a uh, there's a part of the video. It didn't make it. The footage didn't make it in the video, unfortunately. But I was like hyping everybody up, and um, I was like, you know really getting into into it and whatever and i threw my i had a 40 and i threw the 40 at the ground and it shattered everywhere (laughs) and they said i wasn't paying attention because i was still like you know in the middle of the speech that i'm giving everybody trying to hype them up gene what i was told gene was like 
I'm gonna get the broom. <laughs> he, just, <laughs> he, just, and he just turned and left. He like ran inside. He got the broom and the dustpan. He like ran out. He's like hey, sweeping in the street. That's someone who understood the moment. And he like he like sweeping in the street and shit. And I felt bad because you, you so were like, in right, your mid speech, bro. Yeah, bro, he knew it. Dude. And it's so like all right, cut whatever. And so I go away, and then. Wack was like, damn, I wish I would have got that. I, I, I didn't get that. Uh-huh. I'm like, you didn't get that? He's like, no, I had fucking stopped because that was really good. And I was like, fuck. That was really <laughs> good. So and then I turned and Gene's over here swooping like, oh, my bad, Gene, my bad, bro. So I'm like trying to help him pick up the pieces and shit. But that was, you know, quick little, I, I was, quick little fun little story. He was in the story. moment. He, you know he almost I mean? turned it into a Molotov cocktail say, and threw it, it through the fucking deli. I thought you were going to say uh, Gene was in flip-flops when, when it went down and it was an accident. <laughs> <laughs> Gene happened to be barefoot that day. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, film right hey, here we in front got of the a, B side, you know. We got also an epic photo like me uh Wacko. I'm uh I think I believe Wacko's in the car and I'm like getting handcuffed on the car. We, you guys use that as B side promo. Oh, we yeah. used it as didn't promo. You? People, people thought something really happened. They, oh, were, like, they, did. they were like, What happened Great. to rap? And, and and Wacko's like in the it was fucking epic, dude. And Wacko's like in the car all I I believe fucking Oh, uh, dog, and she's working for the radios now, too. I believe Day Day took that photo. Oh, no, it might have been Trish. Was it Trish? I think it was Trish. It was Trish or Day Day that took that yeah. photo, bro. Like, yeah. oh, that's crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, and, and it was. Find that. Yeah, that's a, yeah, I haven't seen that picture in a while. I yeah. got I to gotta find it. it was so, epic. so, yeah. Throw back. There it is. Oh, all those songs, too, were on the uh, the album, the original oh, album. Right. So, so, okay, so Riot, uh, Modern Day Slavery, those were on My Point of View. Mm-hmm. It was a project that we did in, like, 2015, mm-hmm. My Point of View. Um, when I first came home, I had dropped the mixtape. It was called Confessions of a Two-Strike Felon. So that was that was. That Is that was the one that had the M and M joint on it? Yeah, it's the one that had alcohol. I have college. both the joints, but I, I just yeah. That's, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, and then I remember you were family. you were also doing the stuff with you know a lot of work with uh, your homies, all angles too. Those are the boys. My guys. Right there. Yeah, those are the homies right there. But I know you're real close. The with first them. night that I met, I met Bio before I met Urban. Uh huh. And it's funny because, um, that night it was at the two year anniversary show you're talking about okay. over there in Hacienda Heights. All right. Well, that was the night I met him. Okay. So I'm still. Bro, I, okay. That's a, I didn't know that because the way you guys chill. I thought you guys knew each other before because you nah, guys are that's cool where we met. Fun. Yeah, those, those, are, are, those are the boys. Yeah. You guys one Bio bought a pitcher and was drinking out of the pitcher instead of getting a glass. <laughs> yes. Bio didn't get a glass. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, yes, that. that's it. Okay, yeah. look. Okay, so this is how I meet Bio. You got to understand. Yeah. Bio yeah. was going. Look, shout out to big dude. So look, man, shout out to Shouts out to homie Bob. Shouts out my boy Irvin. They're literally at this point he like straight out the picture. They, we are we are as as family as you could be without yeah. you know what I'm saying without being related. Like I'm in baby showers with these fools. You know what yeah, I'm saying like yeah. like I really they've embraced me in a, in a real way and they were a, a key part of like when I was in that transitional period of my life when I'm on parole and I'm moving from the IE over to the valley all that shit. Like they helped. They literally was on some real life shit. Choice Bio Urban actually helped me like. With real life apart from music stuff, you know what I'm saying. But besides that, even like getting back in the lab because they had all that. Yeah, stuff. and they, yeah. they they were bringing me to the studio. Yeah. I didn't have to pay nothing. Um, but like on some just on some real life shit, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But the night that I met Bio, he was going through it. He was in an interesting time in his life, and um, bro, I thought this dude was a fucking psycho. This fool, <laughs> yo. Okay, so I first of all I meet him. He's drinking beer out of a pitcher. <laughs> All right, like he's fucking drinking beer out of a pitcher. That was, it, well, it kind of looked like a mug in his and, hand. And <laughs> kind of. In his defense. Right, and so he's walking around, and then he hears me uh, rap, and what it was was Choice played Alcoholicology. He just oh, played oh, it. All right. And then he put a beat on, and I started rhyming. And then this fool by, I was like, this fool's dope. So he comes up to me, and Choice is like, yeah, this is the guy I was trying to tell you about. Uh, Choice is like, these are my boys. This is my boy Bio. He's from all angles. Remember, I was, t- I was like, yeah, yeah. Said, all right, well, this is Hazard. So we shook hands, whatever. So then we're, we're by the, I remember we're by the DJ booth and we're chilling. And because Choice is spinning. And there was some, 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 some female comes over. And um, I'm trying to remember who it, who it was. I really can't remember. But s- s- some female comes over and um, Bio starts aggressively like rap battle freestyling in her fucking ear. <laughs> like aggressive as fuck though. Like aggressive. That's like, romantic. Like, like, but like he was like, but he was like rapping some wild shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'll grab this bitch by her ankles. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, it was wild. I was like, what the fuck? Like, this was wild. Yeah, you know what I like mean? Bizarre from he was like super <laughs> aggressive with it, right? And the old girl's looking like, 
So then, like, uh, we're ciphering back and forth, and I jumped in, and, like, I was, like, trying to smooth it out, you know, and, like, it was fucking hilarious. I was watching this fool, like, aggressively rap battle in this bitch's ears. It's just a hilarious, like, <laughs> and I, I can't even call her bitch. She might have been a nice young lady. But <laughs> aggressively rap battling in this, in this that's lady's how, ear. That's how uh, Bio courts the lady. I kid you not. It was, like, I think he might have got the number after, but it was yeah. the wildest, like, it was the wildest it, it thing. I was, like, yo, this dude's a demon. Like, what the, you know, and then, and then I'll never forget. We were, we were done. Um, I had I had rapped and then Choice was done with his set. He's like, "Yo, I got a set at the Blue Monkey in Hollywood. Do you want to come through?" And I'm like, "Sure, yeah, sounds like a good time." So I was like, "All right, let's go." So we leave Hacienda Heights and drive over to Hollywood. And this fool Bio was riding with Choice, and then Bio's like, "You want to?" Uh, Choice is like, "You want to go with Has?" Because we were just chopping it up, like we were really getting along. He's like. He like Bio was like, uh, is that cool with you? And I'm like, yeah, bro, come on, let's go. I, t- I told him straight up, do you got any like felonies or warrants or anything? Yeah, yeah. Because and, and, I, 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 I told this him, uh, situated first. Right. I told yeah. him, I'm on parole, dog. Just are you gonna? He goes, like, no, no, no. Are, are we in a high speed pursuit right. today, or can we just get pulled over? Right. Well, I, go, I straight told him like, I'm yeah. on, I'm, I'm on parole, bro. Do you got any like felonies or warrants or anything? He's like, no. Nah. I'm like, you good? Then let's go. So he jumped in with me, whatever. And and um, I'll never forget. I literally asked him that, like, "Do you got any warrants?" And he's like, "Well, I was like, well, I'm on, I'm on high control parole. It could get hectic. I don't give. I said you can come either way, but like, you know, just just to let you know, I'm on high control. I I just didn't want to cause him a problem. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and so so we get out to Hollywood. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. And to add to that, that's how you know he's a real homie. He didn't give a fuck. He yeah. drove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he was with it. He was he was with it. I was just like, I just don't want to cause any he- you know, yeah, any, yeah. any headaches for you. But he's like, no, nah, you're good, let's go. And we, we dipped out. So we get out to Hollywood, we're, you know, we're chopping it up. We're dri- all the whole whole drive up, like we're just chopping it up. He's telling me about like stuff they're doing musically at that moment. And uh they were working heavily with my boy EQ. Yeah. We were yeah. recording excuse me. Recording out the ashtray. And um, it was just, uh, uh, you know, it was a cool, cool conversation. We get to Hollywood. Bio's like, all right, let's, let's get in here. Let's do it. So we, we get up in there. And like I said, I was driving everywhere. So and I'm all high. So I wasn't really drinking even that night. Um, I think Choice got me like one from the bar. And I'm, I'm you know, I got my one drink. I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to hold this the whole night. You know, um, whatever the case is. Bio did not feel that way. Bio goes to the bar and like this was like double fisting if I'm not mistaken. In the fucking blue monkey, you remember the blue monkey, right? Yeah. In the blue monkey, bro, over by the DJ booth, and then there was that little area right there. And we're up there. And I look and he's aggressively fucking freestyling in another bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like aggressively, like aggressively <laughs> rapping and like and like and like the chicks like grinding on him, he's grabbing her just, just it was the honestly. Hey. I was like, this dude is a mad man, bro. He was on a mission, though. Yeah, bro. Hey, <laughs> that uh, dude was on a mission, bro. He linked. I remember he linked the uh, um, uh, choice. Speaking of choice, though, he linked. Uh, you know, we, when we used to work with CC and and Gop yeah. from K Day, man. And shouts out to them, man, because we used to have fun times. But I remember we went uh, one of the times. Choice was spinning somewhere, dog, and. I remember it was a, I think it was like a Halloween day or something because I think I wore like a fucking Bob Marley Rasta wig okay, that okay, I wore okay, for okay. like 20 Halloween straight. Okay. No, but uh, it's just a last minute thing. I threw it on and, and dog. And I remember uh, this female, and we knew her too, this female, and, and she was kind of, uh, you know, at that time it was, I was not the aggressor, the female was. And it was funny because these fools, and it was the same joint, dog, but I remember like, uh, these fools took a picture and like I guess as a joke and then they put it on B-Side Show and I saw it after and I'm like oh hell no, <laughs> I, no I, got, I still got a little control here nah. they go hey why'd you take that I said dog what are you guys doing man? <laughs> some random shit happened in the park <laughs> you gonna get me in trouble yeah man and I was and I was single at, at the time but it was like oh come on man like this is not how we're, this is not how we're gonna go out on this platform <laughs> this is not this is not the the inquirer <laughs> hey, but, oh, uh, yeah. hey uh, let, let's get into it bro like um you know where we're at now like it, it it's like it took people a minute um but people finally saw and it and it was crazy because for you it was a transition to it almost like somebody told you to to try something on a dis- different social media site 
And here's the thing, like, you've been doing your 40-ounce Fridays. We're getting into it, man. 40-ounce Fridays and full of fat. I even wore this shirt for this. Yeah, shit. sorry we didn't. We have cans instead of 40s for you today. I know. We, 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 we should have done, like, the, <laughs> I was going to I was gonna go video. buy up buy out the liquor store, man. We yeah, should have yeah. done, a, like, the Snoop video and had a whole fridge filled with 40s, <laughs> dog. We could have showed that in the thing. That would have been so fucking hard. But, but I, I even wore my, my shirt. Shout out, shots fired. But it, it's got the old English. I know you don't drink the old English, but it's the 40 on there. Yeah. But 40-ounce Friday, man, it's been going down it was a concept um you made originally i i think to show the the consistency in the bar work yeah. because you know even now it still happens but people's attention spans sometimes are short and they don't want to wait for a new project or whatever the reason might be yeah. um how'd you start 40 ounce fridays and then we'll get into how it progressed but how, how'd that originate yeah so um i was uh i was done making music bro i i had um Felt like I had well, given allegedly. It. Yeah, and, you know, at the time I was done making music. I felt like I had given everything I could. I was frustrated. See, this is what I was talking about earlier: yeah. the highs and the lows. And, and I had and I had pretty much said quietly though. I didn't like make some big announcement. Yeah. I just thought, yeah, I'm done. People overdo those announcements. Yeah, sometimes. you know what I'm saying. This is gonna be my last album. Yeah, yeah. Your ten, I, I your ten fans really care, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I retired again. You know, but but um, that being said, I just kind of stepped away, and I was dealing with a lot. Um, I had like an open court case mm -hmm. for uh, custody of my daughter. I was kind of focused on that, and um, I kind of left, like, just kind of decided to leave it alone. And um, I had focused on getting custody of my daughter because while I was fighting for custody of my daughter, I was on parole, and they were like, "Nah, you, you, as long as you're on parole, we won't give her to you." Then after that started being kind of like real nitpicky and i remember like i was censoring myself when i made music i think the reason why modern day slavery and start a riot didn't do as well as i thought they could do is because those weren't the records i really wanted to make i thought they were important so i made them i stand by every word in every one of them songs but i didn't want to be making that kind of music i was doing it because i was on fucking parole and like i didn't want to get violated for a bar mm -hmm. like oh that's gang related or oh that's you know what i'm saying you're going to get violated. So um, I was really, like, taking my talent and using a different avenue with it, which I thought was a good thing. Like, the, the, the music that I was making, I thought, I stand by it. I still think it's good. But it wasn't what I really wanted to do. It was kind of a compromise. Like, okay, I'm, I'm smart enough. I can talk about these topics. I'm going to do that. You know what I mean? I, I couldn't really talk my shit shit because I would go into court. And, like, I'll put it to you this way. My daughter was here the day that we filmed Riot. She was back here in this room, Right. And I didn't let her go outside or nothing. Um, they still threw that shit in my face after. Like, you had your daughter. This is what the judge said. Um, it's been brought to my attention that you had your daughter at a music video shoot where you glorify violence against police officers. Uh, like, like I was like, I can't fucking win, bro. Yeah. And so it was like, bro, if you guys, like, anybody, go, go watch Start a Riot. Go listen to Start a Riot. Go whatever. And go show me how that's, like, a terrible... Uh, example for kids you're like fuck out of here right but i was like at that point i kind of got frustrated and i was like man i am i will quit doing all of this before i endanger my yeah. relationship with my child you yeah, know what i'm saying yeah. so that's why i had kind of stepped away from it um i so i get custody of my daughter and then my boy urban shouts out my boy urban from all angles comes around knocking talking about i got beats bro <laughs> like let's let me let me give you some beats Showed me some beats. Congrats to Urban, by the way, too, man. Oh yeah, yeah, he's got a, he's got a baby girl on the way. Yeah, yeah. Congrats to my right. boy Urban. He's got a baby to my, baby girl on the my way. Brother, super super happy for. Her. I was just at that baby shower actually. Yeah. Good time. We we got hammered. So um, <laughs> so uh, you know it's bad when there's a bunch of fools like like a bunch of fools with bald heads and then uh, uh uh bandanas hanging everywhere and then they're like pouring Ciroc in the fucking paper cups. <laughs> like it was. <laughs> That shit was wild, bro. Yeah, yeah. It was a good time, but um, well, but this is uh, different. Yeah, so Urban it hit me like, yo, I want you to um, I want you to 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 make some music on my beats. Show me some beats. I liked them. Whatever. We started recording. We liked the music we were recording. We were like, damn, we should try to promote this somehow. So we were talking about doing a um, uh, uh, like a freestyle series. And I had had an idea called uh, Five Finger Fridays way back when. I'm going to go jacking for beats. That was the whole thing, right? I never, the, the plan never came out because it was kind of when I was in that weird period when, I don't know why I stepped away from music. Uh, so it never came out, but he told me, do you want to do that? I'm like, well, people seem to like, because I had another video that had done some views on Facebook 
or I was like buzz. I had put buzz bars, whatever. I was, I was, I was a lot Is more. Is that in the hotel room? It's actually in my boy's living room. Okay, but I was buzz bars. I think I see. It I was like that yeah, one. buzz bars, and it hit you know. I had put it up, and I was a lot more. I was like like blackout drunk. Yeah. <laughs> I had been drinking the whole day, and then that was the end of it. So, um, by that that video had done well for me. I said people seem to like when I drink and talk shit. So, what if I do one called Forty Ounce Fridays? And uh, it was coming off the hills of like Nipsey passing away, recipes and Nip. Um, and uh, we had done like a contest. I- Icon had done a contest, and I had just done the contest real quick in my kitchen. I had a beer, or whatever, and I was just drinking, and then. I spit the verse, and then my boy Urban was like, I wish you would have done it in my pad into the mic. We could have, like, made it a better quality. I ended up getting second place in the contest. I still contend that, that my verse was the best. But uh, as you should, my boy, my, Urban, my boy Urban was like, bro, I think if you would have done it in, in my in my pad, you know, in front of the mic, it would have sounded a little better. Maybe that would have kicked you over the edge, but you definitely should have won. So I was like, let's just let's do this series, you know, 40 Ounce Fridays. He's like, let's do it. And we started originally like just to kind of bring people's awareness to the fact that I was going hard at music again because it was almost like I had never done it, you know what I'm saying, by this point because it was like 2018, 2019 at that point. And it was, like, it was almost like I, I had never done any music, right? So we started it, and it, it just kind of started building momentum, you know, and it took on a life of its own. Yeah. Um, and, and I kind of you know, started getting known like as the 40 Ounce Friday guy. Um, and then what happened was, uh, like two, three quick, like things kind of happened within a month and a half of each other. One, I was getting bugged to start a TikTok. So this was about eight months ago now. Let me see. We're in July. Nine months, eight, nine months ago. Damn, that's crazy. Time was quick. About eight, nine months ago, my, my boys were bugging me and they were like, um, yo, has, you should really start, you know, uh, uh, a TikTok. And I was like, what am I? I don't dance, bro. What am I doing? <laughs> I had actually downloaded that like, app. Or I don't ride a skateboard anymore either. Right. So, <laughs> so I had I had actually downloaded the app because my lady would send me um, like TikToks. And I could never, o- like I would go to open them. It would redirect me to a web browser. Or be like, get the app. So I finally, <laughs> yeah. I got the app. So I had the, I had an account. I just didn't post nothing to it. Then I went ahead and I was like, man. So my boy was bugging me. He's like, look, um, there was a beat called She Make It Clap. A soldier boy, mm-hmm. it kind of went viral. The do, 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 she make it clap. Do, 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 do. So people were rapping on that on TikTok. He had put one up. He's like, You should rap to this this week for 40 on Fridays. People people were rapping it on TikTok. So I did. I put it on, I put it on, on my IG. And then I was like, Man, the whole point of this shit was to do it for TikTok. So let me just throw it on there. So I put it on TikTok. I forgot about it. I went to sleep. I woke up. This shit had 50,000 plays, and I had 1,200 followers. Damn. I had zero followers the day before. I never posted anything. And then I got 1,200 followers, 50,000 views. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Yeah. So I tried putting some other shit up, and then something in my head told me that that video, that Buzz Bars video I was telling you about, that video was recorded on 420 in like 2017, 2018. It was like when I was done making music. I hadn't said nothing, but I said, I got some bars I want to get off. My whole thing was record me rapping when I felt like I was at like my peak lyrically at that time. I felt like it was the best lyrical uh, uh, display I had to that point. I said, record me because I want people, when I get old, I'm going to say I used to rap, but I was actually good, and I want evidence of that. That was the only reason I made the video, the only fucking reason. Put it on. We put it on Facebook. It did like fifteen thousand views over there, and I remember people liking it a lot. So I was like, "Shit, if people liked it that much, let me throw it on TikTok." So I remember I threw it on TikTok, and then it, it, it went nuts. Mm-hmm. Um, I went from I had um, one thousand three hundred fifteen followers. If I'm not mistaken, thirteen fifteen. Yeah, one thousand three hundred fifteen followers. I showed my stepdaughter like, "Yo, look, I just started my TikTok yesterday," and she goes, "You got a thousand followers." And I was like, why should I got 13, 1,300, right? <laughs> well, to be and precise. She's like, and she's like, so, you know, there's people with like millions, right? And I felt bad. I was like, God, for real? <laughs> you know? So I was like, whatever. So I went to the restroom. I go to shower. Um, I put the phone down. I remember I looked at the TikTok. I was like, I put my phone down. I jumped in the shower. 20, 30 minutes later, I jumped out the shower. My phone's open on TikTok. I'm like, fuck, my phone froze. And I was like, why is, why is my phone open? Fuck, the motherfucker froze. 
I was getting so many new followers and notifications, it was keeping my phone open. I had went, I went into the shower. I had 1,300 followers. I got out the shower 20, 30 minutes later. I had like 4,000 followers. Damn. I was like, yo, what the fuck? My phone's tripping. I like, closed it. I went. I got dressed. I came. I opened it. 5,000 followers. And you showed your stepdaughter. I, Look I at called this. A, I called it, right? I called an Uber. I called an Uber to head down to my boy Praises at my boy Danny Zico's house. And it's crazy because he was the person that I recorded that video. That, that, that's at his house. Yeah. That, that, that Buzz Bars video is at his house. So I'm like going to his pad like, bro, remember that video we did a long time ago? You are going crazy on TikTok. I get to his pad, I got 8,000 followers. Okay. And then we're just watching the views go up on this video. And we, I put that video up, you know, on, on that afternoon. And and that was Thanksgiving. I remember that was that was Thanksgiving weekend, if I'm not mistaken. A week before Thanksgiving or something like that. Yeah, yeah, Thanksgiving weekend. And I, I put it up on a, you know, on it was a week before Thanksgiving. Yep, it was a Saturday. So I put it up Saturday at like 3 o'clock. Marijuana affects the memory. And... By midnight, we had done a million views. Mm-hmm. On that. And the thing was, I was breaking every rule of TikTok. One, mm-hmm. I wasn't using no filters or effects. Two, I wasn't doing no dance, right? But then three, and the big one, and this is a big one, that motherfucker's like almost three minutes long. That 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 video's on. It was right when and TikTok TikToks started are allowing. Short, right? Yeah, and TikToks yeah. are generally like seven seconds, ten yeah. seconds, fifteen seconds. I had a three minute video, and people were quoting. And I know people were watching the whole thing because people were quoting the end of the video. <laughs> had the way he, and at the time, now you can scrub, you can fast forward along TikTok. At the time, you couldn't. You had to watch it all the way through. So people were like sitting here, like, "Bro, I just watched. What the hell did I just watch? I'm gonna go watch it again." And then they're quoting shit at the end. Oh, when he when he says this, and it was crazy because what I learned about TikTok was people go on TikTok. Yes, there's a lot of people like trying to be famous or whatever, mm-hmm. but a lot of people are on TikTok just to consume content. Mm-hmm. Ton of profiles. I'll look at if I look at their page, they got zero posts. Yeah. They just go on to watch shit. There's a lot of like I see that they have all these useful things like hacks and kitchen yeah. hacks and all these different types of it's, stuff. It's, yeah, it's crazy. But and, and, and so people just go on there. It's almost like a, a, a shortened version of YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah. So people just go on there like to watch shit. So like the people on there, generally speaking, tend to be actual fans of music. So now with rap, what a lot of people haven't realized is there's a huge hip hop fan base on TikTok. It's just that most people think of t- TikTok is like this bubblegum app. Yeah. It's not the case. People are like hardcore rap addicts on that on that on that yeah. on that app. So like I, I I tapped into that base, and so that was the first thing that kind of happened for me. Raps that was like I said like the week of Thanksgiving, um, and that shit started going crazy. What, what happened was I put my Instagram in my in my bio, so then people went back to my Instagram. You know what I mean? And so my Instagram is going crazy. And then so um, it's, they're kind of feeding off of each other. Then I had a couple of viral rap pages on Instagram, um, like at rap music, I believe it. Yeah, at rap music um, posted the video. And that went crazy. Um, at um, um, bars only or something like that. Something bars, straight bars. Oh, at straight bars um, posted it. So on rap music, it did like a million. On straight bars, it did like a million. You know what I'm saying? Like views and shit. And so, and then I'm just like, my, my, my followers, the day before I started my, I don't say, I mean, I had the account, but I wasn't using it. So the day before I posted my first TikTok, I had like around a little under 2,000 followers. And, and today I'm like on, on IG. And today I'm like over 19,000 followers. Man, like it just, it, it, we went from like 600 subscribers on YouTube to like over 4,000 subscribers on YouTube. There's something to say about you know the, the way that, that works with all the, um, the algorithm type stuff because. It, that you kind of see firsthand from that that Instagram is only going to let you go a certain amount until yeah. you gain that other base, and then they went back to your Instagram and added to it. Yeah. But Instagram itself somehow they they, they they want their money. Yeah, so they, they run they run ads. Gonna see what yeah, exactly. they want, yeah, they want their money. I don't I don't, I don't knock. I mean, they're they're all paying me now. Like all these apps pay me. So like what what tripped me about tripped me out about the whole that whole climb has is like we were saying. That's why you know we started with that. I wanted to kind of go through the. The journey and the process, how long you've been doing this, and the yeah. all the quality that's already out there, but it seemed like it was almost. And I know for you, it it probably tripped you out as well, but it was almost overnight. Like, and I was even seeing like, and I know firsthand, and then cats were, you know, all of a sudden hitting you up for interviews and different yeah. things, and and cat they weren't before, and no no nothing wrong with it, but the uh, they were. I mean, cats were almost acting like. 
Like it happened so fast that cats were acting like they discovered you. That was a, that's like, the funniest thing dog, ever, bro. Yeah, we <laughs> see. I seen it, dog. I, I seen it firsthand. Like cats. Look what are, I just found. I gotta you guys got to hear this. You guy. guys got to wait. I got this interview coming with this guy. You know, like you know, and and not knowing that you you've been, you know, doing your been thing dope. for a cool ten mm-hmm. years before that. Yeah. And now, it kind of transitions you also. Um, I don't want to use. I don't know if role model is too strong of a word. But it's like other brown young artists are seeing now, dog, just from you. They're being influenced now by what they've seen from you on TikTok. Yeah. But you're influencing, uh, you're influencing now, dog, and that's great. Um, I, I feel genuinely, genuinely um, blessed to be in that position. I, um, I'm very grateful for that. Um, it's, it's wild because I've had a lot of, like younger rappers reach out to me mm-hmm. and they're like, bro, you, you're putting it like, you're showing, you're really showing out for us. You're, you're doing something special. And it's, um, it's a dope feeling. And, and what I love, what I love about it more than anything else is, um, the fact that the, the, the music and skills are being received and respected by like all groups of people. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and um and it's a beautiful thing you know what i'm saying it's all groups of people but um it's it's dope because the fact that i am mexican um gets brought up gets discussed i see people in the comments talking about it but it's not in like a negative or an ignorant way it's just like yeah do you think this is the illest mexican art and a lot of people are like yes that's it yes this is the and and for me that's a dope feeling because like I've watched like I've watched you know there's some black artists that have reached out um let me see I think his name's uh Savvy Third from Long Beach um I believe I believe I believe so um dude dude shown dude shown love um um there's a few uh Frank Nitty I think just commented the other day on something I've had a few people what like, up Nitty I've had a few people like comment and like this is probably the coldest Mexican I've seen do this shit yeah. and that's cool because I, I like the fact that you know that people are acknowledging like my culture my background but only in a positive way and it's not holding me back they're really fucking with the bars it's like no, nah, okay yeah he's Mexican but he's a rapper you know what I'm saying? And it's a beautiful thing. They're, they they acknowledge all like, you know, um other other artists do it, you know what I mean? That 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 um that look like me and then, you know, there's black artists that have done it. There's you know, I got like a white kid from New Jersey who fucks with me, like and he's like, I'm from Jersey, I don't really know many Mexicans. I know a lot of Puerto Ricans and Dominicans. He's like, But you're the dopest brown person I've ever heard. You know what I'm <laughs> hey, saying? And, no, and so it's a and it, that's a compliment for me. Well, you see, know what I'm saying? And, and I love the fact that people are fucking with the bars. Period. And hip hop, yeah, exactly. And hip hop is hip hop period skills or skills at the end of the day and people know that like right. the main head the like people that really know what it is and yeah. embrace the culture if i could man listen if i could make r- rapping well popular i'm all for it bro. yeah if exactly. i if i if we get if we get a bunch of we need to get to that place dog if we get a bunch of little hazards running around i'll yeah. be honored and i'll be yeah. happy you know what i'm saying like are you yeah. kidding me yeah there's no you know like, like respectfully nothing. humbly yeah if i got if i like father a bunch of rappers like oh my god are you kidding me yeah. that would be the best thing ever because like, i like what i do like <laughs> yeah. yeah and especially you know uh kicking the you know the keeping the lyrics important and that's one of the things i, I want to get into this real quick his lyrics have always been one of the things that drew me into so like stuff i consumed usually was a more lyrical artist or or something with content a little more content um yeah beats everything it all rides into perspective i just gravitated towards the lyrical type of MCs and stuff and you know even like to go back to what you were saying earlier um some of the hardest dudes I, like I've seen you know you, I've seen some cholos at some shows and even when we were back doing shows and back in the day I would concentrate on lyrical content as well sure. and I remember cats coming up as well and and then like you don't know what they're going to say to you but they end up coming up and hey dog Fuck yeah, I like that lyrical shit, homie. Fuck that, yeah. like you know what I mean. So yeah. even even a, a consumer at, at some point gets almost uh, uh, 
put in a box of oh the consumer can only like this type of stuff yeah, if they look this because way, the way they look way. yeah this is yeah. what they like oh no, dog i think that the 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 driving force of 40 ounce fridays is is definitely the lyricism like i'm trying to showcase mm-hmm. rap right like in all of its kind of like um just just really kind of in all of its um like arrogant glory right like the whole point of being an mc was to say the most braggadocious ostentatious clever fly shit ever right and so at you know for me at least it's not that you know i don't listen to certain artists or i only listen to, or I, I only listen to that real shit or my thing with the whole when it comes to like lyrics right you know, some people say like, "Oh, that dude," you know, he's trying to do that lyrical miracle bullshit. <laughs> or, lyrical or, you miracle. Know, are you here? You know what I mean? And my thing with with rap is the craft of rap. Obviously, the newer generations put a lot more melody, you know, back into hip hop, and you got guys that are like sing song and stuff, and that's dope. I, I mean, I like that stuff. Don't get me wrong, but the actual, you know, craft of rap, you're not singing. Right. So it's how powerful is your voice? And then what are you saying? So it's not that I necessarily, you know, somebody with like a more simpler rhyme scheme can't be dope to me. Nothing like that. The reason that I get upset when people kind of either talk down on lyricism or kind of try to talk shit or shit on the rappers like, oh, you guys are doing some shit that's for like if you're wearing a backpack, got your headphones on (laughs) in your mom's basement. And it's like, bro, it's not even that. It's okay if the craft of rap is about trying to say something with meaning and, 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 and all this other stuff and you take no pride in your pen or, or 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 however you come up with your raps, but you take no pride in that bro, that's what the fuck rap is. Is you putting pen to paper and come now some people from different regions have a different way that they kind of swing their words. So Sometimes, like, you might have some Southern artists who are a bit more straightforward, but they're hard as fuck. I, and I listen to what they're saying. What they're saying is real. It's just they maybe have a different way to, to sling it well, as opposed and, to some and, dude from, like, you know, Brooklyn and or, deliveries, or whatever Delivery is always important, uh, an important uh, uh, what, uh, accent on the on the beats, too. Yeah. How, how you deliver a bar, besides what you're saying, is just in your own culture, your own accent, how you deliver yeah. that. That's so powerful, too. If, uh, a thousand percent. And yeah. I think that, so that's the reason, like, I really cared about showcasing that on 40 Ounce Fridays. And, and then, like, with 40 Ounce Fridays, I was finally, like, kind of free. I didn't, I wasn't on parole. I had, I had custody of my daughter. So I was able to really kind of get comfortable. And for the first time I felt like in a long time, I was able to talk fully like my shit. And so part of that is like when, like what you talk about, Ravs, like kind of the, like culturally how you like sling certain lingo and stuff. So I started doing that. I started like, you know, you know, sparingly kind of like using certain like Spanglish and stuff like in my bars. And people would be like, damn, because this fool would be. Like, I had somebody tell me, like, hey, fool, I don't understand, like, how you do this. Because, like, you'll be rapping like you're the fucking Mexican member of Wu-Tang. And then all of a sudden you say, like, some shit like, you know, Vato or something. And I, it's crazy to me. I love that. That's the why. Palabras, that's why you know right? what I'm saying? And so it's like, for me, it was it was doing 40 Ounce Fridays. I think part of the success of it has been I've been able to be fully comfortable who I am. Is I haven't had to look over my shoulder yeah. about what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, I feel, I, I always say I, I have, like, the opposite problem of a lot of people. A lot of people, like, you know, and not not that it's cool if you were uh, uh, in them streets or whatever, but a lot of people weren't about shit at all, and they exaggerate, like, mm-hmm. street shit for their reps. You know what I'm saying? I had to dumb it down, like, because of, of the child custody hearing, because of, cause of uh, parole and shit. I had to be careful about what I said. You know what I'm saying? And so with 40 Ounce Friday, I was like, bro, I could fully be me. Like, so, you know, it started a little over three years ago now where we just dropped volume, I think, 168, I think. Crazy, man. This this week will be 169. And so, like, I'm, it's like, it's 10, there's 10 years of, like, struggle and journey from the time I paroled. Um, But, like, for the last three, I felt like I was finally able to fully be comfortable with who I am as an artist. 
That's you know what I'm saying? So so that's that's what I love about peace of mind is yeah. hard to achieve. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's, let me talk my shit now. Like I, I, you know what I mean? I'm not on parole. I don't gotta worry about getting violated for something I say. I don't gotta worry about a judge try, trying to take my daughter away from me because of something I said. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm really able to like talk my shit. You know? And I think that's where that honesty, like that, just that full, like pure, uncut one honesty. Of, one of the coolest ones. Speaking of that honesty, though, I mean, you know, just my opinion, but I mean, yeah. like. The way you addressed it, and not too harsh, but just about the principles. Of, there's principalities in there, but the one of uh, you know deal, uh, talking about the the thing from that clubhouse thing with oh well, well, uh, whack. yeah, and that one when you you know some of the stuff that was was said, and that the way you addressed it though, yeah, I liked it because it wasn't because you know the reality of the thing is. Uh, black and brown we're in the same struggle yep and we we broke bread together so many times on the streets everybody knows that there's right. so many things that have you know but it gets into the politics sometimes on the prison side different sure. things sure um you know why certain things aren't allowed here or there but the way you addressed it you didn't go rambunctious back at it like you know i'm mexican and this and that and you went back at it and just from a just a truly uh, truthful standpoint, yeah. And 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 from somebody who's also been in the system, yeah. And addressed it that way with with lyrics without um, offending anybody in either race. It was right. just the real is what's real, and and people know that, man. Black black and brown, we've been doing it. Even uh, dog, we're here, right here in the San Gabriel Valley. It, you know, of course, that stuff comes into play when you get to certain areas. For sure. But um, we broke bread together plenty in this I, area, man. I think that I think that my reasoning for doing it that way is because I was I was pissed off. I was really upset. But the thing was, I was like, why am I mad for? Mm -hmm. And my main thing was, I felt I felt like things were being said that 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 could affect the the amount of work that's been put in into those relationships you know what i mean um to to make it so that we're in a um like in a smooth sailing you know kind of society right and a lot of work's been done on that front and i felt like with with the comments that were made they were so ignorant and kind of inflammatory and, and kind of all over the place and, and and whatnot i just felt like it wasn't helping anybody and that's why i was upset because i was like man there's been a ton of progress made on that on that front for one person to burn it all down one person that's not active a person that's not out you know in the street nor should he be like he's an old man you know what i'm saying he's an old man he's an industry executive like you know he, he it'd be sad you know what i'm saying if he was pushing pushing the line in his neighborhood but that being said he's like he's over here pushing the line on clubhouse and so i was just like like damn bro really and i my thing was more like like come on if 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 you're supposed to be an og if you're supposed to be somebody that's, that's respected and looked up to um, you're not supposed to be trying to cause problems. You're supposed yeah. to be keeping the peace. Exactly. Because if, if things go left, where, what are you going to do? You're going to go to your home in, you know, Calabasas or Retirement. whatever, and you're going to chill. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're going to go chill. You, 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 get, you get to, you know, you get to go home safe at night. And, and you got these youngsters in the streets that are going to have to reap the, you know, consequences of your words they're the ones that are going to have to deal with that they're the ones going to catch cases exactly. these are the ones that are going to get arrested and, yeah. and killed unfortunately yeah. but the whole point was let's bring some sense to it you know what i'm saying and i, I you know certain people didn't like you know uh what certain people had to say with regards to it i think that everybody that chimed in had had a good point i think that bozo had a good point i think that Thres, i think that Thres did make a good point and i think that he's kind of taking a lot of unfair heat in the whole situation i just feel like um he was you know bold enough to ask the question and have the conversation and he should be commended for that i think that a lot of people have kind of unfairly shitting on him but like i was i was proud of what they had to say and then i just wanted to add my my opinion to it and so my thing was like look i have this platform it's 40 ounce fridays at that point the TikTok thing had already happened so i was like okay let's put this one up and then that one did good i mean we did you know we did 1.5 million on TikTok. You know, for, mm -hmm. for when I put it up and then it did like over a hundred thousand, I think that's California hood politics. It's like the YouTube channel. See, so you shout, know. shout out to homies like, like Bozo too, man. Yeah. What I, what I do dig. And this is kind of where I was heading anyways, is that, um, also with that, it's good to see because, you know, um, it, it gets talked about in all cultures though. And all cultures can say that about their own is sometimes, we get into that uh, the crabs in the bucket mentality. Mm -hmm. 
and you know uh, you know someone else starting to go up you want to pull them back down mm-hmm. no, and it, instead of us all flourishing and helping each other get to that and and maybe you know something that we don't do enough of is unifying more and i and i that's why i want to give cats like bozo and 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 uh you know yourself and um you know uh misfit and uh, and zapata because where i'm getting at is like now we're kind of it's getting in in a place where i feel like at least um publicly it's getting the the support is getting shown a little more for each other yeah which wasn't always there and so that with that being said is there there's so many dope talented artists um that have yet to be heard from the brown side of things man and and uh you know i i got to hear it like the the song because zapata sent shout out to ghost man he was here uh, about a week or so ago on the b side as well but um he sent me that track you he, he did with uh you zapata misfit and cujo yeah uh and that that joined his heart as fuck bro and yeah. it's just playing four different styles yeah like four different ways of presenting the lyrics yeah. and all that but on a hard beat and 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 showcasing those skills that i'm talking about that sometimes don't get recognized as much you know what i mean yeah absolutely i do think i do agree with you i think that there's been a concerted effort um to be more supportive of one another i think it comes i from, hope so you know i think it comes from the fact that people are realizing like well whatever the fuck's been going on for the last 20 30 years ain't working <laughs> that, uh, yeah you know what i'm saying so like you know what the hell Let's are we try doing this way. you know what the hell are we doing and yeah. and then i think also sometimes too you just got to swallow your pride a little bit mm-hmm. and, and 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 just you know be decent to the next man i know me personally i don't i don't i don't do a lot of reaching out uh when people reach out to me i, I i'm very you know i'm very good about getting back to them and thanking them for that um, but like I know I, I I would mind my own business. The reason why my, me personally where it came from for me was like from being on parole and, and 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 whatnot. I didn't want to insert myself into a situation where you know somebody I, where I exposed myself to the possibility of somebody being disrespectful or somebody acting mm-hmm. crazy back yeah. and me getting upset. So I was like, you know what? Let me just mind my own business. I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay over here. I'm gonna write my raps over here. I'm gonna mind my own. The, the less situations you're a part of, the less yeah, chance. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So that's where it came from for me, and I think a lot of homies probably feel the same way. But I think a lot of homies are realizing, like, well, shit. If we all feel the same way, then we should be okay if we get together. Yeah. yeah. So, so you know, like you know, we did the um, when Bozo reached out, you know. Uh, oh yeah, you did that to, joint to, with, with with yeah uh, him, West uh-huh. My Scheme, and um, OJ. And we did that joint, and um, you know, we we went to shoot the video for it. It was just like a fun ass day, like we were just bullshitting in between takes, man. It was like you know, sometimes uh, Von Poe, he's the one that shoots all Bozo's visuals. Shout out to Poetic Man, um, that's the homie right there. So Poe showed up, and um, you know, in between shots, he'd have to you know, reset his camera or whatever. So we'd just be chilling, uh, talking, bullshitting with everybody. And it was really like a like a genuine cool time, um, you know, with the with the Zapata one. Obviously, there's no visual as of yet. There's no visual. I don't know about a plan for one, but the Zapata was just email back and forth. But like when I heard the verses come out, like you know, I heard I'm like, oh, that's raw. And I, I hit up Misfit, you know what I'm saying? I hit up Cujo, and they both hit me back. You know, I just told them like, yo, bro, you did. I love when you said this. You know, blah blah. blah. When you know. I told Misfit I like because he had the whole like the basketball player yeah yeah you know schemes or whatever yeah and I was like yo I love I love shit like that dope shit you know mm-hmm. and he's like oh thanks bro I appreciate it you know I appreciate it um you know he hit me, you know he hit me back and Cujo I told Cujo the same thing like you're my I've met Cujo like once before but I said hey for you a motherfucker for this one yeah yeah and I quoted it and he was just like you know good looking out you know and, um and mm-hmm. a lot of and a lot of and a lot of homies are making a lot of dope shit you know what I'm saying shout out to um. The dude, um, Young Gritty. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. so dope, man. He, yeah. he just followed me, hit me up. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, bro, you're fucking dope. Because, like, Julio G be sharing both of our shit. Like, mm-hmm. these are the two artists I'm fucking with the, the heaviest. And he'll share one of my videos and he'll share one of Young Gritty's. That, that was how I had first heard about Frank it. Frank Nitty's been working with uh, Gritty uh, for a minute. Know, for a cool minute. Right? Getting, yeah, that's know. what I see. I, I don't know their He's relationship. He's kind of, like, but... priming him for this shit, though. Bro, there's the, a lot. The He's been doing his thing. The man. dude's dope, man. The dude's just dope. And see, I think that, like, you know, I'm talking to him. You know, I'm gonna try to get one in and with him. And he's saying something too. Yeah, he's yeah. yeah. And I'm gonna try to get one in with him. You That'll know what I'm saying? Be dope. So like that's that's what I think. As long as the music is good enough on its own, um, 
all the the other shit will figure itself out. A lot of people yeah. have been like, well, how come there hasn't been a you know a Mexican artist to really go? Well, show me the one that should have already. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. You know, when it comes down to it, you know, and I mean mainstream, I'm talking like, you know, like interview on Letterman, you know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, you're over at the Breakfast Club, they know you personally, like shit like that, right? And, mm -hmm. and, you know, obviously you've had like probably the one you could probably point to is probably Snow the Product because she's like been on TV. She's done a Breakfast Club interview. She's done a lot of stuff. So, and she deserves a ton of credit. You know what I'm saying? I think she's got the double you know, the double negative of her also being a woman. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And there's just, so there's that sexism that she probably deals with a lot, but she's dope. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. She's fucking dope. But there's been a certain... I remember her, too, also, uh, you know, they came on the scene, and this is a while back, too, because yeah. for those that don't know, they might have just caught on to her. They, they've been doing their thing for, I wouldn't say at least 10 also. Yeah, at least. And, and I remember they came with this push on social media at the time where, they were hitting everywhere and, and making people kind of recognize. Yeah. And the thing I like uh, that I respect about what they did, though, they kind of did it um, independent as, uh, it, to a sense that they weren't going around trying to find a feature from so-and-so. They they just kept coming with the material. Yeah, she just kept wrapping yeah, her ass yeah. off. Yeah, and, and, and stuff that people could relate to and also see her skills. But it worked out that way instead of, you know, going the route of, you know, let me coattail on something else or whatever. But I just think that the music is getting to a point where it's like, you know, if you listen to, you know, if you listen to an artist, it's, it's really like, okay, what about the music? Like, what does it sound like? Do I like, okay, I liked it. Okay, cool. And, and, and you have a lot of artists that, that, that look like us that are making that level of quality music. Yeah. Like, I, I genuinely feel like, you know, I, I got a, a cool you know, support base behind me. I don't really, Hell yeah. like, I don't really look at it like, oh, I have so many people just hating on me. Like, nah, like, you know, when the, when the shit happened, when I won't lie, it's funny because I, you know, I did a record called Moving Different. It's out right now. Video's out, Moving Different. Um, and when I recorded that song, I recorded that song like right after the shit had happened with, with Whack. The internet, you know, got people comfortable with being disrespectful with no fear of, of getting punched, of in getting the fucking punched mouth. right in the face like you know they used to, you know. When and so, are. yeah, so like for me at least, I, I feel like, when it comes to um when it comes to that um like i i i besides that little dust up i've had a ton of support i can't even front like i got i got my whole city behind me you know what i'm saying yeah, like i yeah. literally you know we was um we were at a um at a fundraiser for a young man who had passed away you know he was younger than me you know tragically sad you know um um and uh you know just a horrible accident and um you know i went it was, it was right there in my city, and I had a ton of people like shaking my hand, like "Yo, thank you," like you got you got Ontario looking cool right now, like this is dope, you know. And it felt dope, like it felt it was a beautiful thing for me. I was like, man. Well, when they, they you know say that, when you got when you got your own uh, place behind you, man, that's a that's what people are all looking for, bro. That's yeah. where you start. Once you get that, you can move around with it, man. Yeah. So I, I feel I feel like I'm in a great as far as you know kind of put a bow on this like I, I feel like i'm in a great place a lot of people look like oh you know i don't have any help or nobody cares or hell no bro first of all i help myself before anything right yeah. but but second hell no i got a ton of people who've been been in my corner since day one who, who like support never wavered i know if i you know wanted to promote something i know it's one phone call to you or to yd and i'm on the b side within a week you know what i'm saying mm. you guys have always been gracious with me like that you guys never switched up on me i can't sit here and say like i didn't have nobody to look at Fuck no, I've had a ton of people believe in my dream. And I think that's the reason, you know, that I'm be fortunate enough to get to the next level. And, you know, and that's important. And what you're saying is, uh, you know, I think too many people make themselves out to be a victim. I'm, I'm glad you see the positive side and, you know, the 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 actual support instead of the, the fucking very few little haters. Yeah, here like what the, the what? because to me it's disrespectful. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you if you focus on three three negative things said when you're you you're setting your fans apart like you ain't giving them props yeah. for digging your shit exactly like, you're too busy worried about these fools and you know you see that a lot though with these fools that are super like i mean pretty kind of famous and shit yeah and they'll be like all oh, these people just giving up like oh you made my day with this new song or this yeah. you made me feel a certain way i saw your interview here but then you have one person that talks shit and that's who they respond to yeah like they didn't say thank you to not one motherfucker on their post, but yeah. then they just respond to the negative. 
And you know, and th- and those cats, those trolls, that's what they live for. They just want a response, bro. And yeah. fuck it, don't give it to them. But anyways, <laughs> hey, you trolls, go kick back and have fun playing video games on your mom's couch, man. There it's you all go. good. Hey, uh, yeah. let's let's get into the rabbit fire round, man. We're almost done with, uh, you know, uh, and then what, you know, any shout outs you want to make at okay. the end. But um, real quick, I mean, you kind of touched on it. I think we could allude to the fact, but okay, name a couple of your favorite MCs, though. Fuck. Um, if we if we go like all the way back, I gotta I think like Easy E Boys in the Hood is one of the first songs I remember like rapping on the lyrics to, right? Um after that it would be like the Beastie Boys, I remember Brass Monkey. Like these are songs like I remember learning the words to. You know what I'm saying? Um after that it was like Snoop, Gin and Juice, right? Um then Dre had such an important part, you know what I mean, uh, in in being an architect of so many artists that I fuck with. Ice Cube you know, today was a good day. I remember, like, knowing that record by heart, right? Um, you know, after that, um, I started getting, uh, it was, like, Exhibit. And, like, Junior High, it was, like, Exhibit, DMX. Eminem, obviously, was a huge one. Um, exhibit, DMX. Uh, then, like, I really fucked with the Wu-Tang, uh, Wu-Tang Clan. Like, I remember when uh, Old Dirty Bastard had that, uh, that, hey, dirty. Oh, yeah. Baby, I got, like, like, I remember, like, you know, knowing every word to that record, right? I'm just like, I always like judge artists by like, how much of your lyrics do I know? You know what I'm saying? Like, if I can, if you put the album on and I can rap the whole thing, I'm a fucking fan. Like, you that's, know what I'm saying? That's how I was with, and, and see, I'm going further back, but that's why I was always a fan of like uh, Big Daddy Kane and, and LL Cool J, bro. Like, or even Rakim, like, I can. I can go do some hip hop karaoke on some of their masterpieces. Fuck bro. Yeah. Oh, are you kidding me? And <laughs> easy dog. Those guys, you know what's so cool what I love about like being a student of the game. I started listening to them because I liked Eminem a lot and he was like, Yo, like Cool G rap, Big Daddy Kane, Rock King, yeah. LL Cool G. He would say his influence. Yeah, so yeah. I went to listen to them yeah. off of that. Because uh-huh. I knew LL, but I knew LL for like all the love records. I didn't know like yeah. you know what I'm saying, like His radio. Shit, yeah. You know what I'm radio saying? and even dude and oh of course bad bro. Bad, like, of course. Oh man, that's So so it's like I didn't know them I didn't know him for that. I knew him for like, you know, like I need love and you know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, shit like that. Well, right? even Kane almost put himself into that fold a little bit too, because oh, yeah. the thing was they had a lot. I mean, females dug them, so they they did have. So they tapped in a little bit to uh, their music to that side a little, but that didn't take away from the fact they used to murder it on the yeah. On the mic and he pulls stuff. it with for Madonna and her book. Remember, yeah. with no shirt on or something. <laughs> yeah, something yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Daddy Kane did right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that sounds right. I think yeah. he had like two chicks in that picture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he was the man. That made me even think he was doper, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? But like, like I said, just the culture in general, bro. I, I and then um, let me see. I was leaving like a big person. I was like, wait, hold on. How the hell have I not mentioned? And I was gonna say somebody. And then I'm gonna think about the marijuana affects the memory. Marijuana. And then you're gonna, and then you're gonna be <laughs> mad you didn't. Oh, oh then, and then obviously, yeah. Okay, so then obviously, obviously, you know what I'm saying? Those who are no longer here, with we've lost so many dope art. You know what I'm saying? So the the, the biggies and the pox and the big L's and the big puns. You know what I'm saying? Like huge, like those dudes, huge influence. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, and Jay Z and Nas, like Nas for me is, has shown me how I could theoretically become an old rapper like an old yeah. man and be a rapper yeah. still and be good at it, Nas is the blueprint to me. Stage I thought right it right. was Jay. I thought it was Jay because I think I think Jay's aged well with his music. And then Nas, bro, King's Disease, King's Disease. Oh, my God, are you stupid? You know what I mean? And he's working with a dude from the IE, working with Hit Boy. Like, it's, you know what I'm saying? It's so dope to me, bro. Like, mm. this fool Nas shouting out the IE and the songs is hilarious to me. I'm like, that's fucking crazy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, you know what I mean? So, like, yeah, I would say, um, you know, and then obviously, like, uh, RIP to Nip. I think Nipsey for me was a big deal because I was in the joint when I watched one of his first videos, I think Hustle in the House. And I, like, I remember he said, like, I'm turned up because I grew up in the 60s. And then there was a dude from Rolling Sixties that was in my in my in my um, tier, and I asked him, "Hey, have you heard of this fool, um, um, N- Nipsey Nipsey Hustle?" I didn't remember his name. It was I was watching the night before, like three in the morning. They used to play videos on MTV, and then the next day I told him, "This is dude Nip Nipsey." He's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I know, cuz." Like he was like straight up. He's like, "Yeah, on hood, like that's a that's a real one." I was like, "Oh, for real?" He's like, "Yeah, that's that's my homeboy for real." I was like, oh, "Okay," he's like, and then so you know, I remember that moment that that being kind of kind of cool to me you know and then 
Um, just watching him, the business moves that he made was crazy. But, yeah. But, uh, oh, let's have fa- favorite fast foods. you have any, uh, what's your go-to In and spots? Out. In, In and, and out. out. Easy. In that one out. was easy. Yeah. In and <laughs> out. <laughs> go yeah. ahead, White. You go. Oh, I would like to ask, uh, DC or Marvel? Uh, honestly, bro, I like, so, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, was, I wasn't a big, con- I, I, what I feel bad for nerds everywhere, uh. the nerds that was holding that nerd shit down is like the cool shit now. Yeah. I'd be mad if that if it was me. <laughs> if I was a nerd back in the day, oh, yeah. I'd be fucking livid, oh, bro. I'd be like, yeah, yeah. You're not, oh, all of a fucking, I used to get my yeah. ass kicked. <laughs> Like, my brother would fuck with me. Yeah, now it's cool. So now it's fucking sudden, cool uh, all of a sudden, Now all of a assholes. sudden, you, you can watch Iron Man with no flack. I, I say this. I like... I, I Batman was, like, my guy growing up. Yeah. But I don't like any of the other DC bullshit. Yeah. I'm not a big Superman guy at all. Um, Batman was my guy. Like, that was my favorite. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I think I've seen a few of the Marvel ones. Like, I've seen Iron Man. Right, yeah. Um, fuck. I think I've seen um, Thor. Yeah. Oh, I seen Wonder Woman. What's that? Wonder Woman was kind of fly. That's DC. That period. was kind of fly. Wonder yeah. Woman was kind of fly. I actually haven't seen that one. But I uh, thought that was pretty good. Hey, uh, I don't we, know, man. They yeah. used to have the shows on TV. when we, See, and that's the thing. When we were kids, you know, like a hundred years ago, but um, they used to have some pretty, at least looking back, they didn't have a lot of special effects and shit. Yeah. I mean, they were you know minimal but yeah those shows were pretty damn good remember they had spider-man and the whole they, the they had wonder woman yeah that was actually good shit like the, yeah i just look shout out to the nerds i think y'all need that hey thank you bro. like <laughs> it shouldn't be that it, like it shouldn't be this fucking you know what i'm saying what the fuck bro like i feel hey, bad because I, I really already, don't like any of that yeah, shit. man low was yeah. already pointing to shay yeah. but hey, you know what didn't get offended he was proud hey i like to say i'm i'll take credit for making Nerd culture, cool. I'll, I'll be I'm one of them. Fuck it. There, there you go. There you fucking go. trailblazer. I'm I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whitey was a trailblazer. That's hey, what yeah. it was. I'm All right, go to snack or drinks in the studio. Um, praise is gonna laugh. So if I'm trying to be good, like if I'm trying to like you know my boy Danny's equal to laugh. He knows this. Um, pork rinds. I like pork rinds. Like chicharrones. Like, yeah, chich- I like I like chicharrones, especially the ones like with actual chicharron on the back, like with the actual carne on the back of them. That's my shit, because it's like, it's a low-carb snack, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can fit it in my macros. Like. <laughs> so I fuck with, I love chicharrones. That's my shit. What up? If I go vegan in five years, I'm going to look back and cringe at this, you know, part of the interview. Yeah, I used to eat pork. I used to eat pork. All right, okay, uh, so speaking of foods, then, uh, would you rather fuck with, like, uh, some, like, Italian food or some, like, Asian food? Fuck. Okay, so part of the fast food answer, I, like, really, like greasy ass fast food like chinese like combo a combo b combo c yeah, type yeah. plate you know what i'm talking about you yeah. know what i mean the, the one two three items you know what i'm saying the, yeah, yeah that's you mean sh- the, the ones yeah. that it, it the fucking like, shit's called like golden dragon and it wears it weighs like four or five pounds i was gonna bro. say you get <laughs> yeah, yeah. you get they put all the chow mein and rice you get four yeah. pounds of rice and chow mein in a <laughs> fucking little styrofoam <laughs> tray a couple for 7.99 you know what i mean and a couple pieces of meat and broccoli and then part of that couple pounds is grease yeah and if they like and if they like you if they like you, they'll give you two fortune cookies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I so, tell, yeah, no, yeah, I absolutely. Tell them throw the egg rolls so, in that bitch. So, I'll say that, like, on some fast shit, that. But, yeah. like, if I want to go to, out to, like, a nice dinner, like I love, nice like, I love Italian. Yeah. I love, I love Italian food. I love Italian food. I love so Italian food. So, your go to uh, uh, game in Vegas, your favorite spot? Uh, what do you play in Vegas? Craps. Oh, okay. Craps. Mine's, mine's blackjack, bro. I just stay on that table, bro. I see. And that, I haven't fucked with it because. I know how to. I know how to I play. I feel. I feel like I kind of do, but it it depends who's on your table. Yeah, man. yeah, uh. yeah. They don't know how to play with you. Yeah. But see, I know how to play, but I get worried that I would get too far into it. That's how I get. Yeah. See, that's why I don't. That's fuck the problem. Yeah. And to well, me, it's always a win once I count how many beers I drank for free during that time. <laughs> uh, yeah, even if I walk away with no <laughs> chips, hey, look how many beers. The I added drank. bonus. I'm good, right, look, look. <laughs> that's so why I, has goes. I started. I started shooting dice and playing. You're Hollywood. probably VIP, huh? I'm I'm diamond. Oh, oh, like, and that's dice. You know what I'm saying? If I was, if it was blackjack where I'm counting numbers and sh- oh, it's all bad, bro. Uh, I get too into it. it was, yeah, my know, other game, like, uh, you know, I'm more of. I, I'm better, or I get more into playing spades than dominoes. You know, okay. there's spades yeah. and dominoes, guys. But 
I'm a spades guy, bro. And I'm so I'm like, fuck, you're on my team. I hope you know it. I count your books. And for real, for real. Like, you know, this is this. When you play, I get you, mad, dog. This is serious to me, do man. Do you play, do you play like jail style, 25 to life? Like if you, uh, if you carry bags, or if you don't get your, if you. No, well, we tried, we've tried that before, but too many of the, the people that play with us sometimes, uh, I guess maybe not as serious. So, yeah. I mean, I'm down to play that way. Yeah, I, I play, I, play, I get mad. I'll be counting everyone. We call, it, we call it 25 to where, life. Where if you get a 10 bags, you go back a hundred is like that five, five bags five bags back 50. oh okay yeah. oh, f- oh okay yeah, yeah five bags. Bags. people be overcompensated but yeah. and then you you take credit in counting the one the p's the possibles that yeah you know like oh we needed this one and yeah. i counted it as a possible we got it well that's what i that's i'm what, into that that's shit. the way i count my children you know what I'm saying? yeah i got one i got one in like five possibles you know? <laughs> One and five P, yeah. hey, hey, bro, and and <laughs> and bones. I'm joking, <laughs> I'm really joking. That's all bad. <laughs> we as, uh, this is a, like will be the thing, dog. When you when you even go more viral, they'll be like, yeah, you had a hazard at a real positive interview, but he has a gang of illegitimate children <laughs> out there. <laughs> like this is what they're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna focus on, right? And hey, I, I want to thank you, Has Man, uh, yeah. for coming through and keeping it open with us. Yeah, I say we we like to keep it, uh, you know, around an hour, a little over, but um, sometimes we get into those real conversations, and it's been dope. So um, thank you. You guys just came back from Vegas. Your yeah. spot, your your favorite spot, and we'll. Uh, have to put up some of those epic photos. We should have put a couple of those during the the show, like <laughs> the wheelchair photo and the you know good times has with his uh, uh what is that, the alcoholic suit to throw up in <laughs> know, whatever they call it. <laughs> hey, but put it for the flag. Um, <laughs> thank you for coming through, and it's good to see you again. Um, at, from uh, from our standpoint, um, it's so dope to us to see the recognition you're getting. Uh, finally, that's been so well deserved, and there's more to be had. But uh, any shout outs you want to make, man, before we go? Yeah, shouts out to um, everybody here, Rabbit Season Pod, B Side Show. Appreciate you guys for having me. Um, the fact of the matter is, you guys were genuinely one of the first groups of people to shine light on what I'm doing. So the fact that everybody else caught up now is like, you guys can actually say that. You know what I'm saying? Well, they caught up to what we've been knowing. So mm-hmm. thank you for that. Yeah. Shouts out to you guys. Yeah. Shouts out to were, my boy. If they were watching, they would have known too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shouts out to my boy Vic Gene. He's off camera right now. Another one of those, you yeah. know, one of the early, you know, believers in what I do. Yeah. Uh my boy Choice One. Shouts out to him. My what guys, up, Choice. My gosh from all angles, my boy Bio, the, the fucking crazy madman that I met that night at the fucking B-side anniversary <laughs> show. I, I still admire the way he drinks out of a pitcher. It's fucking amazing. Like goals. And then, and goals. Then, <laughs> and then my boy, and my boy Irvin as well. That's my guy, man. You know, two dudes that I got a lot of love and respect for and appreciation for. Shouts out to them. Uh, my boy Guy Beats. Uh, shouts out to him. Um, uh, my boy EQ. I uh, want to shout out, you know, to him. He just dropped a project, uh, Burn Easy. It's his last, uh, last solo offering. Official. Project, uh, last yeah. official project and i'm actually on there shout out to him man like i'm doing a little bucket list shit that's kind of cool i want a song with eq and fucking psycho less Dope. you know what i'm saying on burn easy so check that one it's called block the song's called blockade yeah. blockade by um by eq uh featuring uh your boy has it to the fucking mic and uh psycho less psycho fucking less but i'm on a song with psycho less you know what i'm saying shout out my boy mark ford uh he just dropped a project with the dude vanderood out in japan yeah, um, so, so he's so, been mad busy. Too. Yeah, my, my boy Forty, he he getting it in, man. So so uh, yeah. So he we dropped the joint called Pruno. Uh, it's featuring it's uh, Mark Forty and um, a pilot, a dude named Pilot. I think he's like from Virginia. I think he's dope. He's fucking dope. And then and then uh, me uh, on that one uh, on the Vanderu joint. Um, that shit's dope. It's uh, it's a limited edition vinyl, only available in Japan right now. So um. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they're playing my, they play my shit in Japan right now, baby. Shouts International. Out, shouts out um, uh, Bozo. Uh, he's got the uh, the Hunger Games out right now. Uh, our joint's called The Tributes featuring uh, uh, him, Westmont Scheme, OJ the Great, and, and me. Um, that That's done really well. Shouts out to Zapata, the joint with uh, him, Cujo, Misfit, and me. Um, we got some work right now. You know what I'm saying? Get it in. Um, and and uh, I want to shout out my boy Danny Zico of Room ZLA. That's my engineer. He's got me selling like a million bucks right now. Uh, appreciate the fuck out of him. Um, I said God beats my boy Drio, who's now my uh, fucking music attorney. Shout out to him. Um, it's dope. Um, you know my boy. He was on my. He was a singer on Modern Day Slavery. He uh, he left music 
and went to law school. He's my fucking lawyer now. Oh, that's so like we're going over some contracts. See right how now. things work out. Yeah, bro, we're going over contracts right now. So shout out to him. That's um, right. M- m- my guy Donnie, um, real good dude. Uh, and just get get me that Donnie, if you're hearing this, get me that fucking cut, bro. Give me that bigger cut. Um, so <laughs> um, yeah, man. Uh, I think that oh, I feel like let me see. I said Urban and Battlefront. Yeah, no, that's pretty much. I think that's everybody. Um, and then last there but not least, fix the memory. Um, uh, well, two things actually. Uh, my wife, she's always riding with me. Appreciate her. Um, uh, my daughter is forever a pain in my ass. Uh, love her. Um, and uh, my my fans and supporters, the the people that are, if they're new to the ball game or if they've been fucking with me for five six years or, or eight nine ten years, um, I'm so grateful and appreciative. To it's every all good, one of them. man. Because you know if saying? they're if they're new to the thing, you got plenty of material to yeah. go check out and get you well acquainted. Man. Yeah, and it's crazy because they do that shit. I'll, I'll get yeah. a notification. That's how they should. I'll yeah. get a notification. It'll be like one person that found all my shit, and I'll get like. They like 70 of my videos, 100 of my videos in a row, and you'll see the same name over and over and over. You know what I'm saying? So that's a, that's a dope feeling. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to my supporters. Um, if you see me in public, don't mad dog me. Just come up and say what's up. I promise. <laughs> yes, it's me. Yes, it's the faded neck tattoo. Yes, it's the dude like dressed way fucking casual. Like, and he that, might have a 40 of Mickey's. I may, I may have a 40, 40 of Mickey's. And uh, yes, that's me. Come over and fucking say hi. That, the fucking mad dogging shit. Guys, look. Yes, it's fucking me. I understand you're inquisitive, but yes, it's me. Just come over and be like, hey, fool, big fan. Um, <laughs> I appreciate each and every one of you guys, though. Y'all are dope. Thank you so much. Um, and then what I found out pushing my music, the ladies like the shit that I'm doing, too. It's like it's not, you know, um, necessarily going to be thought of as popular with, like, the woman demographic at first. But, like. Hey, women like bars too. Yeah. Oh no, I, you know I, mean? I was gonna say there's They're, some real hip hop head ladies. And out there. I was gonna say because most women are, generally speaking, a lot of women are, are smart. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Be smarter than some of us dumbasses sometimes. So yeah. it's like from an intellectual perspective, they really be listening. That, they, that's they, why they we need them the around bars. to keep us in line. Sometimes. Straight up though. <laughs> and so from an intellectual perspective, I have a lot of ladies that like fuck with what I do, and they'll be quoting the bars and breaking them down. I'm like, damn, thank you. There's you know some hip hop head. Yeah. Ladies, so man. so really, shouts out to um, shouts out to my supporters. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I genuinely appreciate each and every one of them, and and the fact that I have this support base now is kind of taking me to a different place in my career, and allowing me to have uh, what I can call actual career in music. So we got a lot of things on the way. I hope I can do this again with you in like Hell yeah. four months and, and give you all the news. I will, I'll talk to you off camera. We got plenty but of stories gotta, to you know talk saying? about, man. But this is just, you know, giving people a little yeah, taste absolutely. of the ride we went through, too. Uh, uh, yeah, a thousand percent. So, yeah. yeah. Shouts out to you guys, man. I, just, I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, I go by the name of Hazard to the fucking mic. You know, this is the Ravis Season Podcast. That's right. Peace.